The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this light come. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. Hello and welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill episode 124. If you've never heard this show before, I am Gav. And I'm Dan. We are your hosts and we talk about movies of the horrific type. <laughs> yes, we did indeed. I, li- I like your voice warble hey. there. And now, of course, do you know what? It's not that long till Halloween. Woo! I know, I know. My wife was saying this to me. She said, you must be excited. I said, why? She said... Well, it's only a month or two away from Halloween. I said, oh, yeah. that's why I married you. Yeah, yeah, totally. I can't fucking wait. I just, I don't know. I just, I don't know what it is. I just go all on out. Because I know everyone else is, like, especially the podcast group, we can put up what we're watching. I always go all on out with it. And I get older of Bo and say, Bo, let me do a podcast. And I, get, I just swamp myself in a horror for the month. And I love it. Well, and then I start to wean towards the end. I'm going, oh my God, I'm not drowning in horror. I know, by November I'm always happy to like watch like a Ryan Reynolds comedy or something. And I always go, I'm going to do November thrillers, and I watch two for like the first, first and second of November, then I'll just forget about it. Well, while we're on the subject, obviously welcome listeners, let's talk about a couple of things that I've heard about, because in our intro we like to discuss a few new things. Um, what, like but, uh, down the corner shop stuff? You've yeah, heard there's down a new. There. They they sell a new type of bread and it's really good. I can tell you stuff. Downstairs, right beneath me, the curry shop's shut. I got you know. I can't get a gorgeous curry if you come well, down. You can't cut, have a curry. Shut for good. Yeah, uh, the guy in the shop downstairs has bought that and the hairdressers, so they're both empty at the moment. Hang on a minute. The only reason I was coming to visit you was to get my hair cut and have a curry. You can't get over now. Oh, for Christ's sake. The shop's going to be bigger and it's going to be a coffee shop. So I'm going to have a coffee shop just downstairs, so... Uh. Well, before we talk about some stuff that is to do with Halloween, um, just in, you know, some news, let's tell everybody what this is. This is... We were going to do this from a tent, weren't we? But we decided we probably wouldn't have internet. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, We'd both be so, in a tent. I would yeah. probably have tent issues. You'd have tent issues. I think we're both camp enough. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and sometimes we're very intense. We should have covered carry on camping twice on repeat (laughs) well as if you guys didn't know this is our summer special almost it's our summer camping horror special no heat wave Uh, which is good we just passed another one but we're luckily second heat wave in britain which was really you can really feel the climate change now because it was 40 degrees on one of the days yeah and the next day they were, they were, the rain was coming down in my road yeah. and they give, issued a flood warning in Bristol. I had massive pressure on my head again and I was like, I had those recently and I was like, oh, this was the exact same thing. Thunder came in, the temperature dropped and my head just hurt loads. Weird. Crazy. Mm. Um, but we haven't got that again now, so it's cooler again. But you never know, it could be fun this evening while we're recording. You never know. Um, ho- hopefully so. It's supposed to rain later in Bristol. I so do we'll like see. a thunderous summer movie as well oh i do like those hot movies when it's pouring with rain they're good yeah we're good. both fans of hot movies and cold movies last time do i did watch the big heat night of the big heat you were agreeing oh. with me for fuck's sake i watched uh, i sort of had a check of our show fuck is that what is going on what's a fucking dinosaur coming to get me um night of the big heat it was i got that wrong last time okay well this episode to celebrate camping horror films we're looking at two of the biggest names um that people think of we're going to be looking at sleepaway camp which is very notorious uh gab's got some opinions on it i've got some opinions on it well straight away i don't think you're open the statement of uh, two of the bigger films people would think of i'd never think of sleepaway camp personally but it's, it's quite well known mm-hmm. because of the ending mainly but we'll get into that yeah we'll get on that ending yeah Whoop. Um, and we're pairing that up with, and we've only covered one of this franchise, crazy. Randomly, and one later on, yeah. 
that that was my birthday, so I picked it. Yeah. Uh, Friday the 13th, the original, yeah. potentially the best, one of the best summer camping horror films of all time. Yeah, the we'll daddy. Get into that. Yeah. yeah, it really is the daddy. You know, it's up there for me. It's up there with Halloween, really, as blueprints for certain genres. But we'll get into that. We don't want to show the, our hands the, yet. The granddaddy's kind of more uh, probably Mario Barber's Bay of Blood. Oh, Bay of Blood. Well, that is a hell of a film. If you've it? not seen that, it's uh, it's kind of like this really early sort of more swinging uh, Friday <laughs> fir- swinging style Friday the Thirteenth because it's a little bit more hip. I'd like to cover that someday, maybe pair it up with another by the same director. Um, yeah, I'll probably say Rabbit Dogs. Yeah, okay. Really well, that's what we're covering. Sleepaway Camp, Friday the 13th, with a bit of the old bacon um, in there, a bit of Kevin Bacon. And I must say, and we'll get into this more, while I was watching it, I did make my wife look at Kevin Bacon's junk, because there's a couple <laughs> of times in that film where... Look at his dick, look at it, look now. Alice, look now. He is packing a whole stack of bacon down there. (laughs) He might have, uh, knowing that, he might have actually filled it and socked it. No, we've we've seen his dick in a couple of films now. I've seen it in, um, uh, what's the one with um, Neve Campbell? Oh, Uh, uh, the one in the water. Yeah, but, um, Neve Campbell and Denise Richards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why the hell can't I remember does the name? Our his... listeners are screaming at me right now. Yeah, does he get out on that, does he? He gets out, steps out the shower at one point and it just swings a little. And when I say swings, it's like Big Ben. Bong. Never never thought of uh, discussing, uh, I'd be discussing Kevin Bacon's dick. I've got lots of notes on it when we get to that film, so look Weird. forward to that. Weird. Okay. Uh, anyway, so it's our intro. It's episode 124. We already touched on this. Some stuff that's coming up. Some you touched on Kevin up. Bacon's dick. I've already touched on it, Gav. Bacon's willy. <laughs> um, <laughs> bacon's meat. <laughs> um, Halloween could be a very good one this year because we've got a couple of things coming up. First of all, have you seen the trailer for Wednesday? Uh, no, I haven't seen it. I've, I've never been a Adams Family fan, really. I was a Monsters fan, which is so I'm really looking Adam forward Sander to that. Fan. Adam Sandler, no, the Adams Family. <laughs> I don't mind Adam Sandler. Uh, okay, well, it's it's more based on Wednesday herself, and it's obviously it's Tim Burton as well. But the trailer looked very good. It opens with her dropping a bag of piranha into the swimming pool full of jocks, just as she says. I'm the only one that's allowed to bully my brother. And then you see nice. loads of blood flying around. And they what does that make you think Daisy off. would do that? Oh, my God. Yeah. Daisy, for anyone who's never heard the show before, is Gab's middle child. Yeah, he would happily do anything so she'd be the one that bullied her younger brother. <laughs> anyway, it looks pretty good. Tim Burton, I think, is perfect for it. It certainly looks better than that shit show that we discussed uh, in the last episode the trailer for the monsters i guess by... halloween yeah rob's on me here i guess halloween's coming out uh as well like the last one what's it called halloween dead and buried no it's halloween a... roll over and die no halloween retirement no i don't know what it's called i don't know halloween I'm dies or halloween like i was about to say resurrection but that's already moving so i don't know what about um Gimero del toro have you heard what he's got coming out for halloween no. Oh, okay. He has got... Um, uh, he's doing something with Netflix. And it's basically... Uh, I think it's three or four double bills released daily for four days. And each one is directed by a different director. It's called Giamaro del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. Um, let me see if I can just find the director's... Uh, here we uh, go. Are they short films? No, there are, there are two features released every night, so it's double bills for four nights in a row. So he's really getting into it. He's got Panos Cosmatus is doing one of the ones uh, who directed Bandy guys, uh, Jennifer Kent, um, Catherine Hardwick, Anna Lily Amrapour. So some really good. And so it's here we go: eight chilling stories, four nights of double features on one Netflix event, and that starts on the 25th of October, taking you right up to Halloween. So I'm really excited to. Why did I suppose double bills quite nice? But why double bills? Why don't you just release one each night? I think because he he would have grown up. Um, 
in Mexico, he and probably would have grown up with double I bills. The, no. Unless they're doing a thing with it, like uh, the grindhouse thing, where it was like a wraparound and like it was all packaged together, you know. Yeah, maybe, maybe they've got like a little opening. Uh, okay, Either way, well, I'm stoked yeah. for that, though. That's cool. I don't really know of anything much more coming out. Um, I am going to go and watch uh, Nope this weekend because uh, Sarah and I on the High Strangeness podcast are covering UFOs this weekend, and it seems very apt that we're going to go and watch Nope first. Uh, it's been nope. getting mixed reviews. Nope. So I'm going in with a... Uh, uh, I've heard uh, it's very, very good, um, and it cements, and I know you're not, you're, you're split on him, on the director, but I've heard it really, really cements Jordan Peele as a really um, original storyteller. He's definitely okay. got a way of telling a story. Yeah, okay. Um, I haven't seen it yet either. I really liked, obviously I really liked Get Out. I really liked Us. Um, I do like most of the stuff he does, so I look forward to it. I like the actors that are in it. Uh, looks, it looks and sounds good from what I've seen, so... Yeah, give it you know. a go. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, talking of uh, films and things, uh, let's talk about tape three. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Totally finished now. Uh, had a got uh, picked up straight away for the HP Lovecraft Film Festival, Portland, Oregon, for its world premiere in October. Um, but it is. So j- just to interject there, just to give you guys the backstory, tape three mm. is the latest film, short film from sure. Deadbolt Films, which yeah. is our production company, your production house. And, yes, as Gav said, we're very excited that it's been picked up by a couple of festivals. Yeah, and they're, well, they're just they're at a Necronomicon convention this weekend, and it's going to be played there as well, so I guess it's kind of like world premiere there, I suppose. Um, we signed on from to go to base festival, festivals because it's like, well, the proper world release is at the HP uh, Lovecraft Festival, which has had lots of people there before from uh, films and stuff. Uh, um, Stuart Gordon, you know, people in the HP Lovecraft film world have been there. Um, and uh, it's good just to let more, many people as they can watch it. So it's playing this weekend as well. We signed on for that as well. So yeah, it's, it's getting seen and a couple of people have seen it and, they said it's, and they've enjoyed it. So um, yes, that's nice. That's, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed it. And it's nice I, to get picked up straight away. Yeah, it's really, really exciting. Always exciting. And I think we're gaining a bit of a reputation. Um, yeah, it's the third time we've played at that festival, actually. Um, last time, Beyond was put on uh, as their, one of their best of the year and put on DVD and Blu-ray, and they went around the States uh, selling it. Amazing. So, so that it? was quite cool. And we got some bucks to that, which we're putting back into uh, Take 3, which is quite cool. But yeah, it's nice to make. It's really organic. I, I shot it here, exactly where I'm sitting now is where the camera was, mm. and I edited it in the other room and scored it in the other room, and it's all just made in this flat, which is quite nice, actually. You really were born in the wrong decade. I feel like you should have been born in um, the early 60s, late 50s, so that you were a teenager in the 70s, and then you could have done all of that. I've been with the Spielbergs like, and that, yeah. Yeah, you would have been filming in your own bedroom, you yeah, know, yeah, you've been yeah, there yeah. with Peter Jackson doing your sort of yeah. models and shit. Yeah, I still, I don't know, I still like, That's I realised... That is a compliment, I, I, and I totally appreciate, oh, fuck yeah, you put me up there for some high high people, I totally appreciate that. I still just, I'm not very confident with working with loads of money, <laughs> so I seem I to just be working with little as budgets as I can, but, but I, I like, this, I like that. This is one of our cheapest productions. Yeah, there it is, £200. It's fucking epic. Yeah, and it looks really good. Yeah, yeah, it's very easy to kind of, I don't know why, it just seems really organic and easy to do. I had a dream that I'd already made the film. It's really weird. Anyway, that's that. So that's right. cool. And eventually, guys, you'll be able to watch it. Um, yeah, tape three. Keep an eye out for that from Deadbolt Films. You can see mm-hmm. our other short films. Uh, they're on the YouTube channel. Um, Prey. Now, come on. I actually got a Disney bloody got... subscription oh. for this. Okay. Fuck okay, me. So Prey, for anyone that doesn't know, P-R-E-Y, not Prey. We won't spoil it, but you That's need to fucking watch pray. it. That's what we pray. 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 How the hell did he get Prince to let him have that sample? I didn't even realise it was. I f- I yeah, it's um, with Dove's Cry, isn't it? Din, 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 din. Din, okay. din, din, din. Anyway, enough about Prince and MC Hammer. Prey which is a prequel to the Predator movies, of which there have been many, of which we've covered Predator, Predator 2, and Alien vs. Predator on our show over the many years. I'm, so, I'm saying now, can we do Predators and Prey as I see an episode? 
would love to do it. Cool. Because Prey is set in 1700s. It's about a Native American tribe, specifically a woman warrior, but her brother and Trying a few other tribes. Trying to prove herself. It's got some nice, nice storyline things going on. Yeah, it's it's really um, in line with what's happening at the moment with women and women, <clears throat> you know, coming forward and being as equal. And on top of that, it was really a lot of people are saying it's the best Predator film since Predator. It's it's really fucking up there. Sarah, Sarah was like, no, what Predator Two? I was like, you know, Predator, Predator Two and Predators are really fucking decent films. I really enjoyed them. I liked Prey more. Thing is, Gab, if you showed Predator Two, I'm not even talking about the other one for the first time. Yeah, I don't think it's only because we grew up watching Predator Two with Danny Glover and Bill Paxton that we love it that much. Uh, I let Jay watch it uh, a couple of years ago. So Jay was like probably 13 and we sat and watched it and uh, she really enjoyed it. And it was very male muscly. Everyone knows what Predator is like. Uh, yeah. She actually really enjoyed it actually. Um, and that's what I loved about Prey. It still retains that. Yeah. And I told her to watch Prey. I was like, get on that. Muscly. Watch that. It's really bloody, gory. Really, really gory. gory. A bit like ugh at times. Yeah, we won't spoil it because it is brand new. Yeah, I um, want I want to watch it again. Actually, I'd like it for my collection if I could. But, but watch it. It's on Disney Plus if you've got Disney Plus, and watch it. It's got some fantastic fights in it. It's got an amazing predator in it, and this time you get to see the predator fight some animals as well. Um, and the predator is very different, really ripped and and tall. And, it, and because it's a few hundred years ago, you can tell he's got slightly more older tech like it's still technology but it's it's a little bit more ancient and there's a couple of little easter eggs for predator 2 and stuff in it it's just really 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 good <laughs> i had a really good time watching it it was a very good film I was buzzing for days after had a few homages to predator just little things like shh and just like just little things here and there yeah. just images and stuff and it's like that's she so was, the main done. actress was it's, it's, so good, it's really well she? produced it's really well directed uh, by Cloverfield dude who did um, the Cloverfield one in the basement 13 is it or something? Yep. Yeah. somebody asked me what it was like and I said think Pocahontas mixed because it was beautifully shot I okay. said think think Pocahontas meets Revenant but with like Predator stuff because it's that beautiful yeah. barren yeah. wasteland and forest yeah it's a really good film uh Watch it if you've not seen that film. It's, watch uh, it. Very now, good. Now, what I would recommend you don't watch, Gav. Yeah. Here we go. Spotlight's on Dan. What shit has he watched this time? Can it be a new section? What shit's Dan watched? I'm talking about a film called Stonehenge Apocalypse. I, again, you don't smoke weed. It's not like you're sitting there dropping acid. I don't understand what what, what makes you do this. I've got a problem. It's definitely. I don't think there's an... I might have to start a new department in the National Health Service of uh, shit films. Okay. 20, 2010. It might not have been shit, though. But... It yeah. was really bad. I did drive Basic by Stonehenge the other day, actually. But yeah, go on. Basically, a group of archaeologists find a skeleton at Stonehenge of course they do and then they realise that Stonehenge is actually a, some ancient machinery that starts an apocalypse all around the world with volcanoes and pyramids collapsing and everything around the world is like all part of a giant machine to do with their ancient aliens but the problem is Gav it's mm -hmm. got the effects we've talked about this before PlayStation 1 cutscenes it's that bad. It's like watching Tomb Raider on the PlayStation 1. They kind of know what they're going into when they make it, though, aren't, don't they? So they, a, they know that they're going to be shit, and they're like... But people like shit you, movies, I'm pointing at you. When I... Yes, when I clicked on it and pressed record, because it was on a few weeks ago, when I pressed record, I watched that. I knew exactly what I was doing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And they're catering for you, they catered to me and I watched it and it was shit so don't watch that one everybody the That's best the this is the thing though with horror it's so good you could never like, be like when you get in from like, I don't drink anymore but get in from the pub on a Friday night yeah, let's put on a real shit romantic comedy He's, you're probably not going to go that route you might you probably wouldn't even go let's go a shit action film you might do but you're probably going to go like 90s or something well, but you, you might that? say 
let's do a shit horror movie because you know it's a shit horror movie. Funny you say that. I, I mean, I wasn't going to talk about them, but recently, this week, weirdly, just because I've not been feeling very well. You watched a Seagal? Energy. I watched a Seagal movie. Yeah. Uh, I watched Hard to Kill. Was he? He was. It was his first ever film. Did he? Oh, sorry, Above the Law, sorry, it's called. And it was his first oh, okay. ever film. And I tell you what. I've seen them before a long time ago. Chuck Norris was offered it, Clint Eastwood was offered it, <laughs> and they and they wanted to make him a movie star, so they, it was his first ever movie role, and it's a fucking great film from beginning to end, really gritty, it's got Pam Greer in it, it's got really good cast. Hard to kill, it. okay. Uh, no, it's called Above the Law, sorry. Oh, sorry, Above the Law, yeah, I might have to, to uh, might have to check it out again, I saw them once, you know. I also watched Van Damme's Double Impact um, this week as well, which... Fair enough. I've seen that for many years. When I went around my uncle's house recently, I was going to give him a lift to the hospital, but I didn't need to in the end, so I kind of sat down. I haven't seen him for a while, and he's in his 90s. He's got a big, massive movie collection, that's where I get it from. He's still got a big collection, so I sat down, and I was like, and his, my auntie was freaking out about something on the phone, and I was just trying to ignore that shit. And I was just like, trying to chat to him, oh, yeah, check out movies. I was like, just look at movies and that, because I can't help it, so I'm going around checking. He's got loads, fucking loads. He goes, oh, turn that around. And I turn it around, there's more DVDs in this little rotating thing floor stand and um i looked over one point there's at least three steven scale movies amongst these old really random uh bank robbery movies black and white bank robbery movies from the 30s and 50s and stuff really random shit and he's got some steven seagal it's like oh you got some seagal over there nice and he um he might have even had once you're talking about but yeah yeah i mean seagal definitely was set to be a, he's very good in those early ones but Wow, what a joke. He Plex, into. Plex uh, the free service, uh, has a um, uh, section, and it's a sign like All Hail Seagal Films or something. Wow. It's like, wow, wow. That's, a bit, that's going a bit far. Wow. Well, while we're on the subject, Gab, would you like to play a game with me? I saw lots of seagulls recently because I was on holiday near the beach. Would you like to play a game with me? <laughs> Depends. Uh, luckily, I'm a, a, a different different town from you, so it's not, not involving touching in dark, in darkness. I got your joke, by the way, Seagal. So I've got a game for you, which I wondered, is wondered if you got it. Which is is this the name of a porn star, or is this the name of a Steven Seagal character? Oh yeah! Here we go, listeners. We don't do these sort of things very often, but I thought I'd jump in here. Okay. Yeah, love this. Right, straight in there. Mason Storm, porn star or Steven Seagal character? Is that the character from Under Siege? Well, I can't tell you, can I? You've got to oh, tell I me. I think what... it's Steven Seagal in Under Siege. It's Steven Seagal in Hard to Kill. Oh, okay. okay. What about Gino Fellino? <laughs> <laughs> See that doesn't. It's first of all, mate. First of all, my brain went laugh because that's funny. Then it's like, no, it's not really. It's just a name. Um, porn star Steve, or Steven no, Seagal's character? Not, it's a shit porn name. Steven Seagal's character. Yes, out for justice. Right. Casey Ryback. That is Steven Seagal in Under Siege. Correct. Forrest Taft. <laughs> 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 that is a, a dude that gets his dog out for cameras. No, that is a Steven Seagal character <laughs> on Deadly Ground. <laughs> oh, I love you, Steven Seagal. What is that again? Say it again. Forrest Taft. I swear that is porn. I don't know why. I don't know what Taft would be. Orin Boyd. Porn star, Steven Seagal character. Well, see, this is and I'm, uh, introducing it without even guessing. This is what I used to be like in my school fucking exams, my GCSEs. I'll just be like A B A one A. The oh, fucking I failed everything. Um, I'm gonna have to go. It's got to be porn because you've been doing too many Steven Seagal's. So that, that is a Steven Seagal character. <laughs> it's exit wounds. What about <sighs> okay. Sasha Petrosevic? Steven Seagal character. Correct. That is in a film called. Uh, what film was it? Uh, oh, so it doesn't matter. There isn't actually see. any male porn stars, is it? It's just all Steven Seagal. <laughs> what about this one? Cock Puncher. Was that his character in uh, a recent movie in the 2000s? Yes. The Onion movie. Steven Seagal played the Cock Puncher. I'd read about it, but I didn't know the, the film. Wow. So there you go, guys. 
the end result is all of Steven Seagal's characters sound like porn stars. I'm thinking the other porn stars that get on set and they're looking through the cast sheet for the day and they're like, what is it, cock puncher? They're like, yeah. cock puncher? What is he called, cock puncher? <laughs> ah, we're doing a sort of jackass flavour with the porn movies now. So, judging by your reaction, I think your favourite is Forrest Taft. Forrest Taft. I want that to be a porn star. Not that I want to watch him, but, you know. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for playing that game with me, and I'm glad that we got to talk about Steve. Bushy Skull Taft. Bushy Taft. Now, let's talk about something that I've watched. Now, you know I confessed a few episodes ago that I watched you, 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 on most episodes, confess something or other. Something from your childhood, drunkly one night. Drunkenly from my childhood. <laughs> yeah. Or, right. or it's something that you've watched recently. There's always, it should be Dan's, conf- Dan's Confessions. Okay, well, here we go. Dan's Confessions. So I confessed that I watched Poltergeist season one, two, three, and four, but don't claim to have I time. I didn't even for know it. this was a fucking thing. Yep. I told you this on my birthday episode. No, no, I didn't know. You told me that then. I've still don't, I've put out my mind. I didn't even realise there was still a TV show of that nature. However, I finally got around to starting a TV show that everybody told me is amazing. And I knew that I wanted to watch it. And I'm talking about True Detective 2014 season one. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Only seen this first season. Heard to see the second season not be good. Heard third season's okay. But uh, I've only seen it and I got it on DVD. I really liked it. Really folk horror as well. My God, guys. Uh, Listeners. Got King in Yellow. Season one, yes. From Beyond. Season one is... I mean, I can only talk about season one because that's what I've watched so far. I will watch season two probably in the next week or so. But also, it's not just about the story, which is about a series of weird ritualistic killings. It's about those two as detectives and that downfall almost, isn't it? It's Woody Harrelson and it's... um, what's All right, all right, all right. Yeah, why can't I remember his name? Uh, Matthew Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey. They're brilliant in it. It's set in the deep south... And he just it, looks so horrible off the wall, doesn't he? Matthew McConaughey. Oh, he does. There's one scene in it where he was so nasty where he says to a woman, and this is not ruining it for anyone who hasn't seen it, he says to a woman who killed her baby with proxy, Munchausen by proxy, he whispers to her as, he's, as he gets the confession from her, he, he stands up and he says to her, newspapers are going to be pretty hard on you. So are the TV stations prison isn't kind to people that hurt children and then he leans even closer and he says to her the first opportunity you have you should kill yourself and then just stands up and walks out the room and she just goes no what do you mean what do you mean and starts crying and i just thought fucking hell that is horrible that's mental shit especially if she's about to go into the cells yeah it's a really good film there's a nice bit of folk horror going on there some good stuff uh sarah sarah's watched it i don't think she even got through it i'm not sure she couldn't get into it and i was like really i just don't know why uh yeah it's like an eight hour film essentially isn't it pretty dark Um, really dark um especially towards the end when you find out a bit more about the sort of the stuff going on behind the scenes Mm. and it's set over three time periods isn't it it's set in 1995 yeah and jumps back and forth kind of pulp fit and well yeah. tarantino is but yeah i can't recommend it enough and I, I i've heard season two isn't very good but i'm still going to watch it Which and then it's season three it's Co- colin farrell and i thought oh man he'd be really good but it's colin farrell and um dude that likes to have a wank in that psycho movie and uh, vince vaughn vince vaughn fin- little wanker yeah him um so i don't know i don't think vince vaughn's like really but but Old thing, I thought it'd be all right, Colin Farrell. Yeah, that's why I'm looking forward to it because I think those two. Are, I'm quite, I quite like both of those two. So. I do like Vince Vaughn, but I just don't, don't feel like he should be in that for that. Where right? Colin Farrell, yeah, absolutely. So I don't know. I don't know. After seeing him in a couple of those more harder, um, what was the brawling cell block, whatever it's called? Yeah, I um, saw that. I don't remember it. Very, very good. And he was in Dragged Against, uh, Dragged Across Concrete. I didn't watch it. It just seemed too long. <laughs> really, really, really good stuff. Yeah. Uh, right. Should we get into this, or have you got anything else? I've got nothing else. Have you got anything else? Not really. Um, uh, went on holiday with the kids. That was really nice. Down to the beach. Came, paid you a little visit the way home. That was nice. You did. Let's so talk about that. You popped around. Yeah, popped around. It's a Unifam. Picked up a couple of treats from you. Little prezzies. 
Um, what, what did I give you, Gav? Nice. Uh, it's a James picture, which is great. Um, a, a key fob for uh, room 237 um, uh, from the uh, Overlook Hotel. Which and is about 24 inches long. Sorry about that. It is massive. What I'm going to do is get a fake key, a really big old fake key. <laughs> yes. And put it on it and just leave it. That'd be brilliant. Yeah, and just leave it as like an ornament, just hanging up. So I really, I'll find, like, I'll wait till I find like a really big key. But imagine if I get a key in one day. I'm like, oh, I wonder, and it opens something. That'd be oh, creepy. Don't go in there. And uh, you gave me a really good Ghostbusters uh, picture, which I need to frame up and stuff and put up. So yeah, all belated, just birthday and Christmas. Presents. And I've got some things, things for you. Yeah. yeah, and I've got things for you. And I need to get some things for the kids. Um, I, it's one of those things. It's like there's no point in me getting things for the kids until I see Dan because they grow so quick. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, I'll, I'll wait to see what stage they're at and then I can go okay I've got you this really annoying musical instrument which is the best thing to buy parents because then they sit there going why have they given us a musical instrument <laughs> brilliant okay should we get on to this uh, sleep break camp well before we do that oh, let's get everybody in the mood yes let's let's get into our pyjamas the fart is starting to go out a little bit get your marshmallows out oh so, get your schmores get your schmores going get your sleeping bags zipped up never had a schmore that's so that's what is that what is it is marshmallow in what like wafers or something so so it's like a chocolate and wafer biscuit Sandwich. And then you put a marshmallow in the middle mm. yeah and you one on each side and then you just let it melt and then you squidge it together mm. You eat it, and it's beautiful. I had them in Canada. It's beautiful. Mm. No, I had one. I've got some big marshmallows up there, so I could actually, in the break, toast a marshmallow before we record. Well, you could On my do. gas oven. It's not the same, but, you know. Not the same. No. But let's get everybody in the mood by talking about just a few. If you're thinking of the these two movies we're covering, Sleepaway Camp and Friday the 13th, let's talk about some of the other more famous ones. Mm. I do love well. a camp... Holland, not as in just camping camp in general. Holiday. I do like a uh, camping horror movie, and uh, it does span definitely, without a doubt, from Friday the 13th, and my love and nostalgia as a child watching these films. Indeed. Um, <coughs> well, let's start with The Burning. We yes. covered this on our show. It's got mm. Tom Savini in it, doing his ma- makeup magic. And he picked up and... on DVD recently, actually, yeah. It's very good, and it's definitely up there, very notorious with the, the Garden Shears. Uh, Weinstein's first film. Um, interesting movie, because they never did a sequel. and I, I think we've discussed it. Did we cover Burden? Yeah, we did. And I think the reason why is just that there was no... no um, you didn't have like a, a theme tune. What we find of these, like Halloween, Friday the 13th, there's music things which make them very, very, very memorable. Uh, Friday yep. the 13th, Michael Myers. Um, da, 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 da. It's just these little things. Even Freddy's got his sort of one, two, Freddy's coming for you. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of Freddy musical cues and things, certain things. And the burning just, uh, they missed that trick. And I think, I don't know, the burning, it couldn't be the burning part two. Friday the 13th part two, I, don't know, I suppose you can with that. I don't know, it's strange because you expect the burning to have at least four fucking followers. But I, I think what I, lo- I like it is I stand alone. Yeah, oh, exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. But I'm surprised I, I, I wasn't. Think. Very, very surprised. Unless it just didn't make him money, which is also surprising, as it's a wine scene's first film when they went on obviously to make lots of movies and wanking flower pots in front of people. And one of the reasons it was quite notorious is because it was one of the first films to be banned from the UK video Nazis list as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So there we go. Um, a newer film to mention, which we're both fans of and we haven't covered yet, is The Ritual. Oh, for some reason, but I knew we'd already covered it. I thought you were going to say um, uh, Cabin in the Woods, funny enough. but That's, that's both... on my list as well. Mm. Let's talk about Cabin in the Woods first then, because you brought that up. Okay, Cabin in the Woods. Um, obviously not a tenting movie. Some of these movies we've got tent in, obviously, but I suppose Friday the 13th aren't their actual cabins, aren't they? Yeah. Um, Yes, really, really good film when that came out. I was just like, what the fuck? And it was shelved for a couple of years, just sitting there doing nothing. It's like, what are you doing? Until obviously 4 got a bit more popular in the Marvel films and um, Chris Hemsworth, because um, uh, he's in it. Hunk- Hunk- really, really, he is, he is. He, really, really good film, um, Cabinet Woods. Um, let Jay watch it, and they fucking loved it. I think it rewrites horror really or it at least gives an answer to 
it, why it, people act the way they do in horror and films. It, yeah, it's great. It does. It, it does actually put things in your mind and right, let you think about things. You could go back to your other previous films that you liked and go, oh, did they then choose this? They could have chosen another thing because it's underground. You could set that in all of these old films, Evil Dead and all these sorts of things. We've covered that um, in our Cabin in the Woods episode, actually, where we covered that at Evil Dead. So go back and listen to that. Um, Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2, we would have to put in this list as well, but enough has been talked about with those two. Um, going back to what you were saying a minute ago, though. Um, Ritual from 2017. Big fan at some point. I I'm kind of want to get the uh, the strange beast at the end tattooed on me. Um yeah, I, I uh, really, really, really like that film. I've actually dissected that film out of just interest because of the script. It's very much a three-act movie. For the second act, they literally walk into the woods. The third act is what happens. I won't say because it's uh, spoilers. Really, 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 really good film. A well-produced movie. I fucking love it. Yeah, basically a group of friends lose one of their friends and so they decide to reunite, get back together and go on a trip to honour their dead friend in Eastern Europe. That's where I'm going to stop. Yeah, just watch it. It's fucking great. You need to go watch that mm. um, immediately, really. No, Real not folk immediately. horror vibes. Uh, um, yeah, it's taking that camping movie. It's taking that sort of hostile thing with the backpackers going to another country and um, just shit going on. But it's not really meeting lots of people. It's getting lost in the woods for a start. That's just It's always a classic. Someone twists their ankle, someone, and then they get lost in the woods. There's no phone signal, all that stuff. But it's done really well sorry my mind drifted a bit then because you said campers tourists on another country i'm thinking of american world from paris but anyway pulling it back i need to watch that one again um madman gav madman madman mars i haven't seen that movie Mm -hmm. for years you said on videotape can't remember it that well to be honest filmed exactly the same time as the burning and both films were inspired by the Cropsey urban legend as well. Um, and that's another reason they're both quite notorious as well. Uh, it's pretty decent. It's like Candyman meets Friday the 13th. You know, if you say his name, he'll come. Uh, yeah, I quite liked it. 1982, Mad Man, it's all right. It's all right. Um, I've got to ask you, what do you think of uh, the Evil Dead remake? Yeah, that was cool. I went to cinema, watched that. I loved it when it rained blood. It looked really good in the cinema. That was epic. I was the only person in the cinema. Yeah, I don't think there's many when I watched it. I went. It's... I went on eleven a.m. <clears throat> matinee. Oh, okay, yeah. I went. Um, I don't remember. Where I went. Um, it's a really good film. Um, Evil Dead remake. I, I haven't seriously seen it since. To be honest with you, it's real gruesome and that. But I think they did a fairly respectful job of doing a good horror movie without. Stepped on your toes in a bad way of the other one. No one dissed it, I, like you normally get people dissing movies. Came out, it came and went, with, but it's, it's all right. It's definitely up there with some of the better remakes of classic horror films, I would say. Yeah. Um, can't really not talk about just a brief moment in one of the creep shows, Creep Show 2, talking about the raft. I oh, nice. felt like that was a segment from... Ah, beat you. Ah, beat you. <laughs> yeah, great. That is That's, great. It is a good one. It's a good section. That's a group of kids, guys, stranded on a raft in the middle of a lake while camping, and there's something in the water. Even That's all I'll say. Even though he touches up that lady while she's sleeping, and uh, oh, her face is all know. fucked up, and he's still going, yeah, she likes it. Randy! Oh, Randy. Randy, Randy, Randy. Randy We've got is to talk Randy. About, um, he is. We've got to talk about um, Blair Witch Project. Randy Rafter. Um, yes. That is not so much summer, but that is definitely camping in the woods. Blair Witch is so good. I want to watch... Um, I wanted to watch... I was thinking... I want to watch the remake... The sequel... The original sequel, not the part two movie again which came out a few years ago um yeah play which what can you say everyone knows it. it's a it's a fucking classic and we've covered it many many years ago yeah would you class midsummer as a camping in the woods summer holiday film well you are straying a bit you are a little bit it is because that's though, more of a, of a cult yeah i did watch that again right? recently and quite enjoyed watching what's like on a saturday afternoon it seems like a real good saturday afternoon movie don't know why <laughs> Because it's quite long and it starts off kind of gradual and then you get into it. Um, 
Yeah, I don't think I think you're swaying away a little bit. I might let you I'll let you have it a bit, but really we want to be going with camping. All right, let me bring it back then. It is they do go to a place, but it's not like a campsite type place or like it's not a cab. It's not a the burning cabin. is Friday the thirteenth is yeah, it's not a cabin in the so woods. So a cabin to speak. fever. Yeah. You can't cabin fever. I would say that you would be that would definitely be stranded in the woods in a cabin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty fucking awesome film. Probably the well, I don't know. Would you prefer it to Hostel? What cabin fever? Um, <clears throat> they're both different movies, but I do like them both. Only really, it's only literally last time I was with Sarah I was chatting to her. <clears throat> we talk about weird stuff, as you can imagine, between us. I didn't realise he's fingering her uh, a wound. Yeah, that was me that, that said that to you. Oh, was it you? Were we on air? Yeah, was it I last time we were recording? Get, no, no, no. It's just where we're chatting on the phone. I, I get um, you to both muddled up. She, exactly. I Sarah, that. you are way hotter than Dan. No offence, Dan. No that's offense. all right. You've got no, your own thing going fine. on, but Sarah's got a, her own thing, which I appreciate more. All right? But you're, but you're right. In Cabin Fever, I corrected you and said, no, no, he's fingering her wound in her thigh because she's rotting. I love the fact that I thought that was me and Sarah talking about that. That's the sort of yeah. thing we would talk about. Um, I didn't realise and I thought it was just fingering her and she, she was just bloody because she's dying and, and stuff and I didn't realise. So then that makes the next time I go watch that movie and be like, Ugh. Now, there's a good homage in that film to the next film I'm going to mention which is Deliverance, eh? Now that is Camping in the Woods gone fucking wrong. Yeah, that's not what you want that to happen, is it? That summer is what it feels so hot. Burt Reynolds is sweating. There's and... another movie very much like that called The Rituals, with an S at the end, which Ooh, is very yes. much like that, with uh, Hal Halbrook, I think, isn't it? Um, yeah, uh, Deliverance is classic. We we covered that, actually. That's we a real good film. I lent it to my parents after I watched it, and I was like, I wonder what they thought of that. Well, one of my dad's favourite films, weirdly, but he said, oh, I, I don't ever want you to watch it, though. And I thought, I don't really know why. And then one day when he was out, I got his videotape and I watched but it. But that would have I... made you, as you're watching it, going, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? And then when that came on, it was probably worse than it was because he'd built it up. Yeah, I really was unhappy with the rape scene. <laughs> I'm... Are you right, little Danny? What's wrong? <laughs> Nothing. I've seen some things. <laughs> Nothing. I'm not happy. Don't know right, that. We're going camping this weekend. No! Mum's bought you a banjo. Meow, 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 meow. Um, that's my list. Can you think of any that I might have missed? Yeah, if I had more time, I've got a terrible memory. Um, there, there, there is a load of said films. And the, uh, there's some good classics you can find. There's some sneaky ones you can find. There's there's loads. And then, like I did recently for our patrons, I did like a little holiday episode, mini holiday episode, with a few holiday epi- uh, uh, films. Because, yeah, we're doing campy ones, but then it does go into that, the holiday territory, and I covered like vacancy and things like that. But it's no. Trap. Yeah, no, I think, I, think, I think you've done all right there, man. There's going to be other stuff, but you'd be you happy go, with guys. that list. Little taster, if anyone wants, wants to watch a, a little blitz of camping horror summer films over the next and few watch days. Carry On Camping as well. Brilliant film. Barbara Windsor's tits. Rest in peace, Barbara Windsor. Oh yeah, she died. Hmm. Yeah. Sir so James' wife died yesterday. Oh. She was 90-something. My hmm. wife told me, and I said, <laughs> I said to her, I can literally imagine him in heaven. Not that I believe in, like, heaven or God that much, but I can imagine him in heaven flirting with everyone and then turning around and his wife turns up and he's like, bloody hell. Because he would have been having a great time, and then she's turned up. Yeah. Anyway, bit of a weird thing. Definitely. Well, we next do? up, Sleepaway Camp. Let's have a trailer and come back and talk about this. Let's do it. Dear Mom and Dad, I've been at a Sleepaway Camp for almost three weeks, and I'm getting very scared welcome to sleepaway camp someone is watching you hey baba reba someone is waiting for you someone wants to scare you to death Oh, my God! 
sleepaway camp, you won't be coming home. Sleepaway camp from 1983. Angela Baker, a shy, traumatised young girl, is sent to a summer camp with her cousin. Shortly after her arrival, anyone with sinister or less honourable intentions towards her gets their comeuppance. Slash, slash, slash. Um, I always, I came to the party later, even though it's 83, for some reason, I thought this was like maybe 86, 87, I don't know. I, when I came to watch this movie, I was just like, I said this to you the other day, and I kind of felt like that back in the day. If anyone does know the website, I feel like if on wish.co.uk you order Friday the 13th, you end up getting through the post, Sleepaway Camp. And that's how I always found this film. Uh, kind of like a real cheaper version of Friday the 13th and I'd watch it going I wish I was watching Friday the 13th but I've only seen it one or twice now that was my take on it now I know you're a good fan of it so I'm going to let you speak your your thing on it yeah I mean I heard about it because of the ending mm. Um, mm. We, we say that we're going to spoil films so I'm going to cut to the chase on this well yeah yeah um, the ending of the film turns out that Angela is actually a guy all along. She is uh, she, her dead brother, uh, as it were. A boy. She, she's still a boy. Yeah, it's... and you see her dick, and she's the whole end scene is very. It's, it's the shot end. And... It's, it's just the ending because she's she's just there with her, uh, and it's a little boy that did it. So is that actually his penis? And if so, are we watching? The it younger... wasn't a little boy. He's like sixteen or something. Like okay, so a... we're seeing a sixteen-year-old's penis, which is yeah brilliant I don't, um, I don't know how young the kid uh, was but... regardless of that anyway and it's a shot of them with their mouth just open just staring holding a head just going ah. and that shot is is really fucked up and yeah. I said to you after watching I feel that like they were like right like with Friday the 13th Sean Cunningham is like which I'll get to this he is like, right, we need a movie. Halloween came out. It made all this money. They're going to have a business way. They did the poster before they'd even wrote a script for Friday the 13th. They got people going, we want to see that movie. And they were selling it almost before they'd actually even made it. I feel with this, it was like, what would be the gnarliest thing that we can do? And I almost feel like that was one of it. And they go, like, let's work back for there, which is fine because that's reverse engineering a film, essentially. You're, you're going to the ending and working your way back. And that's a cool way to work and make a movie, you know. Um, I feel like that's how they did it with this. What was that movie where um, the girl, all the way through it, uh, was putting off the guy, putting off the guy? And right at the very end, she was a guy herself. Why can't... Oh, do you know what I mean? It's a black chick. And then all the way through it... No, I don't know. And then at the end, it turns out you see her in the shower. Oh, hmm. The Crying Game. The Crying Game. Yeah, I've never seen that film, but uh, uh, I know the twist, so I've never wanted it's to kind of like, It's kind of like that, really. But I think it's a very, very, very good twist. Um, I mean, we'll get into the story properly, but it basically yeah. turns out that Angela used to be... Um, a boy but then all of her family got killed she went to live with a crazy fucking auntie who is brilliantly crazy who said well i've already got a little boy so i'm gonna pretend you're a little girl and you're gonna be called angela and that's what fucks her up um but we'll get more into that as we go through it so the reason i go back to what you asked me which is me watching this da 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 so i'd heard about the twist unfortunately i think most people do before I'd seen the film. It was in my list of, you know, top ten best endings in a horror film. It was really shocking endings in a horror film. Probably in Empire magazine back in the day. So I probably saw this when I was in my 20s, about 20 years ago. So again, I was kind of late to it, I suppose. I didn't see this probably till, I would say, probably the early 2000s. Um, but still a fan of it. Um, it's got some great kills and some great gore in it. I get what you mean. It does feel like a cheap imitation, but it's definitely got its fans as well. Um, it does have fans. I know there's a cult following, and uh, she's gone on uh, to do a lot of sort of, uh, you know, stay in the horror world. Yeah, Felisa uh, Rose, who uh, plays Angela, actually, yeah. is a uh, very well known. I mean, Gary <laughs> Hill, one of our podcasting brothers, I'm pretty sure Gary has a picture of him and her. Uh, I'm sure he's met conventions, her. yeah. She does a lot of yeah. that sort of stuff. Um, so this film has st- stayed around, stayed around for that reason. Um, yeah. Um, okay, let's just get into it. 
let's get right into it. So we start off with really noisy score, I've noted. What did you think of the score? Um, if you don't remember it, then that answers my question. Yeah, I don't remember it. Uh, and it says, uh, Camp Aramella for sale. Yeah, it shows us as a camp straight away. Um, I did look up to the te- technical spec for this. I was like, because it, it's funny, I watched this on videotape. Um, uh, and it was an NTSC uh, a tape, so it must have been from America. Somehow got here, videotape, and I don't know where I got it from. It worked, though, on the video recorder, which is good. My VCR. And um, I was like, oh, what video film quality is this? Is this shot on video? Um, but obviously, I watched, watched it on video anyway. It was actually shot in 35mm, which was quite surprising. But they recorded the audio in mono. Uh, or they released it in mono. They could have like, done something with it. Um, which is, make, does make it sound really flat. So that might be... Um, you're thinking on the score and stuff. Um, but yeah, we start off with this camp for sale. Giving us straight away what's going on with it. And it's a camp like your Friday the 13th. Yeah, we've seen this camp a million times. Um, kids hanging around. There's always a lake at these camps that kids like to go onto, you know, on the rafts and stuff. And we see a little boy and a little girl now. Obviously, we've spoiled this already. So we know this little boy is going to eventually become Angela. And him and his sister, it's quite a bad start, like a pretty nasty start, really. He's on the boat with it. They're on the boat with their dad. And the, they, get, they get rocked into the water and they're all having a great time. And then all of a sudden, a water skier just flies into them all with a speedboat. Now, let's talk about it's better than that, Dan. <clears throat> this this fucking jock speedboat rider, pilot, <laughs> he's there trying to impress his fucking girlfriend with his fucking haircut. He says, I shouldn't let you ride. Shouldn't let you I ride should, I shouldn't let you. She probably twiddled his fucking bell end a little bit and he went, all right then. She's like, go on, go on, Johnny. Go on then. And so she gets in there and she's just fucking, she's not even that, the thing is though, they're in the water bobbing up and down going, ah, oh, dad, aren't we having a great day? Ha. <laughs> and just past them is land. So she, if even if the boat wasn't there and the kids, she was just going to draw ride straight up onto the gra- uh, sand and just but go up might, on the boat like James Bond. But he, she might have been concentrating on his skier stick. No, she was fucking stupid. He's like, oh my God, pulls a fucking... What is it? The fucking up, the boat wheel, steering wheel. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's the steering wheel. Yeah, yeah. I had to look the other day what it was, and it's like, oh, you pilot a boat, okay? You don't drive it, you pilot a boat. Um, so get the old fucking steering, and they'll f- try and get around. They don't do it, and they take out the kids basically. They what? take out the kids and the dad. It's an accident that happens far too often, Daniel, though, doesn't it? Well, um, Kirsty McCall who sang the Christmas song with the Pogues, she got killed by uh, a speedboat in that manner. Is that what you were going to say? That is in my notes, because I met her one month before. Did you? Mm. You met Kirsty McCall? I was at music school, and she came in to do a talk. And uh, then, wow. then in the bar, she was just hanging out, so I met her. She loved a drink. Mm. She loved a drink. And next month, and that was in January, so she, yeah, so in February, boom. Yeah, it does happen. Weird, uh, and I was just like, that's weird. Met her last month. Oh, that's a shame. Hmm. Um, well, that's an interesting story, actually. I didn't know that, that you'd met Christy McCall. Um, so, yeah, there we go. There's the accident. And it's cuts to eight years later. Yeah. So we'll, we'll fill in that backstory later as we go with the film. But eight years later, we meet Ricky and his cousin Angela, in quotation marks. <laughs> And they are getting ready for a camping holiday for a few weeks away. And he has got the craziest mum. She is... Uh, this is weirdest direction ever. Uh, obviously, they've gone on purpose because no one else is like this in the whole film. So it's this particular thing. But she is so over the top. And and, and it's just like, what the shit? <laughs> it's the weirdest direction for it's it. It's like she thinks it is she... The, very quickly, I looked up, it was the director's first film, so fair play, do you know what I mean? And um, um, he only sort of did a couple of these sequels, that was all he sort of directed. But yes, carry on. Well, the way she acts as a woman who's severely mentally unwell, she acts like she believes herself to be in a television programme or on a stage and it's all an yeah, act because yeah, she yeah. sort of it's speaks very loud like, like it's very... hello Billy and Angela it's very large. we are going yeah. camping today and it's 
Weird. A real issue I had with the film um, was that the camera really didn't move very much, and, that, and it was only at this it was this scene in particular that made me realise that because I was like, but that like, for the you say like stage though, you if you were sitting there in the audience on the stage, that's what you would see anyway. So you can always look at it in that sense, but it it made it apparent to me. But I'm a fucking film nerd that likes cameras. It made it apparent to me that so later on I did see this camera not moving very much, which was almost a, sh- a bit of a shame because the certain elements in this film work, but then it, I just feel it hasn't been put together. But if it's your first time making a movie, it's fucking hard, you know. But I don't know. Now, this crazy ass mum is also a doctor because as I'm about to leave, Billy says, Oh, don't forget, mum, we need our physical notes to show that we were able to take part in all the activities. And she's like, well, I've done it myself. Just don't tell them that your mum did it. And that's because she's obviously fi- fixed Angela's notes to show that she's a girl. So little Easter eggs being dropped here once you've seen the film and you want, might want to go back and watch it. Um, one thing I'm going to say before we get into the kids arriving at camp, and my wife very, you know, quite rightly pointed this out, I already knew it, there's a lot of paedophiles in this film. Oh, I only noticed the very blatant paedophile, the chef. Fucking hell. Who are the other ones? Well, they just all seem all right with the fact that there's loads of underage kids there and they're all like, (laughs) yeah, oh, young chicken. The the paedophile, yeah, because they start up and it's just, yeah, they they are not bothered by him and what he does with the kids. That's what I'm saying, all the staff that work there. Yeah, they're not necessarily, but they're not at the same point stopping it. So they are. He says, ah, the great thing is I come back every year and they just keep getting younger. Look at them go. And and the guy next to him is like, ha, 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 just like laughing and stuff. Um, Wow. And he said, no no such thing as too young. You're just getting too old. Oh, God. Um, And this is a dude that works in the kitchen. Later on, though, he does try on with Angela and um, he's just like next in the next room with no door When you say open. try it on, you mean he tries to get her to suck a- attack his... an underage girl. Indeed, indeed. Yes. And it's just like, well, you could try that just there and then. Like, and it's just like, it's so open. And... Oh, Welcome know. to 1983. <sighs> yeah. Jimmy Savile. It's just... And that's why like the other other people just laugh about it because like that then there and then the people who watch that movie like if that cat movie came out now everyone would be all over the fucking Twitter everywhere blah, 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 blah. it'd get cancelled and fucking taken out or some shit wouldn't it or or like there'd be a real thing going on with it that then probably everyone's like oh you know hmm. now we should probably mention Angela hasn't spoken yet and doesn't speak for most of the film right up until the very near the end really yeah. um, probably the third act maybe uh, so. That's why this movie, there is things in it which is all right. You've got certain things which are going to work really well. When it is actually written, it's like, it's not too bad, really. And you must admit, Having Lisa Rose, she does act she, so she does quite well okay. with her face. Yeah, yeah. You know? she, she's she's acting quite well. Um, so, Ricky, the cousin. Honestly, so I just say again, but yeah, yeah. if the camera just moves a little bit, or it's a bit more cut scenes and stuff, you know... I think that would help the movie so much more rather than just a camera just sitting there wide. It's just like, come on, it pans a little bit, but like, please just get in there with the camera. You might have just had like a fucking 22mm lens or 24mm lens or something that was real quite wide or something. That's all they I had. Must admit, but... I I didn't notice some of that. Um, I th- and now you say it, it's, it felt very stilted in the house before they left. But at the camp, because it's quite a wide... Yeah, spacious I, I, it no, didn't matter so much at the camp. I, I gotta give them props they're trying to do that they're trying to go they, they probably went oh let's try and make this a wide space and it's probably a choice you know I can't diss it but it's just it, I don't know I, it needs like someone else coming into another producer or something and going this is what you gotta fucking do with this film quite frankly it needs Weinstein well, coming in oh god yeah. well, well Ricky uh, while we're at camp he bumps into his buddy Paul and Paul says, hey, how you doing? I'm good, good. Hey, have you checked out Judy's boobs? And apparently, since they last saw Judy about a year ago, last summer, she's grown boobs. Well, we'll get to meet her later on, but they're very excited about Judy's boobs, aren't they? <laughs> oh, this is all just too much, man. <laughs> I have kids nowadays. It's just like uh, these ages. It's just... Yeah, go on. So Judy... Angela and all the other girls are in the 
girls' dorm, and you can tell there's sort of a hierarchy of bully. Yeah, Angela's yeah, yeah. the freak because she doesn't talk. Who's the bitch? The bully That's bitch. Judy. Judy. That's Judy with she, the boobs. She's a fucking dick. Booby Judy. You could call her dick. But she's also Judy's also friends with Meg, who is one of the older counselors. So she kind of helps, lets her bully she's them a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's, yeah, there we go. Um. So. Angela is not eating. They're having their dinner, and one of the guys says, "Look, come yeah, here." This, this is, all of this just reminded me of Jay. I was sitting there going, "Oh my god!" <laughs> just not eating at all, not speaking. You know. And one of the guys is really nice, and he says, "Look, stop picking on Angela. Angela, come with me. If you don't want any of this, come with me into the kitchen. We'll find you something you do like." Takes her in the kitchen, and this is where the pervy cook does his thing. Takes her into the yeah. Big walk-in Her fridge brother. and says, "Maybe I've got something you would like here." I was hoping he wasn't going to say, "I can." Get, I've got something which will fill that mouth or something. Else. Yeah. Luckily, her cousin. But it's a cousin, is it? Yeah, he runs in and uh, helps her. He has got anger issues. This kid. I like it. I like his sentiment. Trying to defend her the whole time, but fucking hell, he's like one to eleven in seconds. But a second, but again, this is very much that style of pervert. As soon as he's caught, cool, he says to, he starts shouting at Ricky and says, if you tell anybody about this, I'll fucking end you. I'll make it hard for you here. So they can't tell anybody about this potential rape that's just happened. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just, it is what it is. And that's that. So first sign of Ricky, what the fuck are you doing? Kicking off, like you said. We've seen he's got some anger issues, and that will come back and bite him in the ass a bit later on. Well, it's also it's also essentially, I guess, making a uh, making up a little uh, thingy there, isn't it? I was about to say a, a fish, little, like a reason, like a red herring. A red herring. <laughs> it's making up a fish. That. <laughs> it's making up a fish. What do you mean? You know. What I love in Hitchcock movies is where you get a fish, Dan. Yeah, yeah. I love a good fish. I love a good fish in a movie. <laughs> Do you mean Jules? There was a fish in that movie. Jules. 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 Uh, so, then, because the cook, the cook threatened Angela, we then get our first POV. We do. And we've got the old classic POV, famously <laughs> made in an uh, in old uh, Halloween. And Friday the 13th, you know, co- oh, copied uh, it from Halloween as well. In the 60s, well. Peeping Tom, yeah, and all that, yeah. blah, blah. My wife famously said, oh, that's a... Uh, I feel like that's been done in a lot of other films, didn't this one? I said, no, this one's copied it from a lot of other films, babe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She she ended up watching most of this film with me while she was sort of sat in the corner working on her laptop. She wasn't in for the uh, the end. She didn't expect the ending. I bet she didn't. She didn't expect to... Nobody expects a cock. The pedo's going to get it. The pedo's going to get it. Not a cock, either. I love the fact that, really, he's just leaning... He's just checking to see if water's boiling, so he's leaning over the vat to look into it. Well, it's not just a vat. It's like a six-foot-tall vat of vegetables that are boiling or something. Yeah, and um, and he gets kind of stuck, and then uh, he looks and talks to the person, kind of a la Friday the 13th. Well, he can't see them, can he, because of the way he's sort of leaning. He says, whoever you are, get me down from here, quickly, Jesus Christ. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And he's sort of kicking off a little bit, but his chair is... Uh, is leaning and leaning and leaning. It doesn't make any sense. It's like, well, he's not that high up, really. If you've got a choice of just falling down and possibly, like, maybe twisting your ankle or your face boiling and dying, what are you going to go for? He'll just fall off the chair. Well, he falls down and the entire thing pours on him. And and he yeah, he is... pulls it down as well. It's just... It... Go on. His scream goes on for probably about 17 minutes, it feels like. It goes on forever, his scream. Uh, yeah, there's, I have a massive issue. Sorry, I have a ma- so, sorry fans. By the way, I have a massive issue with the kills. Got a scenes. massive fish. There's a massive fish going on with the death scenes. <laughs> Basically, they are, are. You don't really see what's going on. They are really fucking stupid ideas and very very boring you don't really see what's going on and then you see the aftermath which is obviously like they've taken all day the next day to shoot just this one shot of afterwards with effects on the victim each time it's like a really boring scene and then effects and it's like i don't know i think the toilet with the bumblebee scene is pretty fucking good i guess in the 80s i was just a bit like oh come on but he's scolded really badly he's taken off in the ambulance oh good effects though 
they have worked on them and all the death scenes. The owner says, don't tell anybody about this. The kids will freak out if they find out about this guy's face being melted off. He's basically our uh, mayor of the town in Jaws. He's just like, no, no, uh, why don't we just, uh, we don't want to scare the kids and things. Why don't we just say he went to town and I'll give all of you $15 more a month. He goes, no, <laughs> like a little meeting afterwards. I quite like this guy, this manager. He, he He's that real, like, get out of any way he can, squirm me, like, how about a... Uh, you know. But he's also a bit of a nutter because later on he, he starts me. attacking Ricky. He's got more him. anger issues than Ricky. He's going to beat up a child. I know he thinks the child is a killer, but my God, just call the police. Don't beat the child Restrain up. the child. But Don't time kill up. the child. So there's a real long, overly long baseball match now. And what I love about this baseball game is there are a lot of men wearing crop tops and hot pants. Here. Is that why you like it? Well... What I love about these 80s movies... The reason I like this is that the men are in from skimpy clothing. But Kevin Bacon does does this as well. And and Johnny Depp wears that crop top in the first... What is it with that? I don't know. I never... I was a kid. I mean, I was only... I was born in 78, but... I've got a bit of a belly at the moment. I don't think I'll get away with it, but we could do them with the podcast on Hot Hill t-shirts, can't we? I mean, we could start wearing... Crop tops and denim. I, I don't think my Daisy Jukes shorts. Having this sort of tattooed belly sticking out is going to look that good. I don't think. I've got a really hairy, fat belly because <laughs> I don't do any exercise other than pick my kids up. And I've realised that my body has sort of created this little belly, which is perfect for the kids to sit on. But I've got one in each arm. That's probably why it's it, it, nature's given me a seat. We are we are just an <laughs> evolution of just carrying on and just uh, uh, our bodies definitely do things for certain reasons. And, and I would say, yeah. I apologise now if I'm turning on any of our listeners with my description of my I think, sexy body. <laughs> I think our listeners are definitely turned on right now listening to us. <laughs> but cutting back to this um, baseball game, there's a lot of swearing, isn't there? Fuck you, go fuck you, eat shit and die, eat shit and live. Fuck Fucking mama. There's this one kid out in the field, and it's a precursor to fucking smartphones. He's on his calculator, which has a a little game on it, and he's just not paying attention, and a ball comes down, and he's like, ah, ah, ah. I think the ironic thing is he's playing a baseball game on his Nintendo game and watch. That's like me in San Francisco when I was paralyzed, could not skate. And I, but I had like, Tony, Tony Hawk's, Hawks. <laughs> and the first level was San Francisco, so I could not just like, oh, this is shit. <laughs> that was like when I was a bricklayer and I was laid up on my back, so I played Tetris for weeks on it. No, I'm joking, I was never a bricklayer. But, but you were uh, laid on your back, so laid I up was and laid laying bricks. Yeah. In Russia, Tetris, yep, yeah, got you. Brilliant. Anyway, this baseball game, yes, it does go on a long time, but we kind of, you know, we get to meet a lot of the blokes that are at this, this camp. And we get to see, you know, a nerd that gets hit in the head with a baseball. And we get to see Ricky acting like Ricky and Paul, who is going to try and seduce Angela later. Then we cut to the disco. And the guys are daring each other. Go and speak to Angela. No, you speak. No, you speak to her. Go on. Ask her to come skinny dipping with us. Oh, OK. Jumping right ahead there. Yeah, OK. Yeah, because we skip over the baseball game. There's not much going on at the baseball no, game. No, no, absolutely not. So they do actually, and she does persuade. To, uh, she is persuaded to go down, which I was very surprised with. Actually. Well, hold on. Before that, Ricky, her cousin, just comes strolling into this disco wearing a cowboy hat. I saw a guy the other day. I was just like, what the fuck? And he, and he was wearing a cowboy hat. But his T-shirt, that's, 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 okay, cool, cowboy hat, that's cool. But he's with his mate as well, his mate one day, I think, and they, they look like they're going, definitely going down to the pub at, like, 11 o'clock in the morning and spend the day there. But he was wearing a T-shirt, which was, like, a guns on it, like he'd wearing a gun thing on both sides, straps. Oh, God. And the T-shirt was, like, everything, with a shirt underneath everything. The T-shirt, long sleeved as well, designed to be, like, a cowboy outfit, I guess. Maybe he was fancy dress, Gav. Nah, this dude wasn't fancy dress, man. This dude was just like... This dude did this every day, I guarantee it. He wasn't fancy well, we, dress. We, we've got a friend called John who, who wears a cowboy... Well, he did wear a cowboy John, hat. John, I don't know if he's still wearing it. Props out to you, John, with your cowboy hat. Yeah, we absolutely love you for that. Uh, actually, no, last time I met him in a pub, like, literally a couple of weeks ago, he rocked up with his cowboy hat. Yes. Never changed, John. Never changed. But... 
I would love to just rock up to a school disco in my cowboy hat, like Ricky does here. You look like a pedo nowadays. You're a bit He's old. got a wood, but the beard especially. I think you turned up to a children's d- disco now with a beard and a cowboy hat. Oh, God. Uh, well, he steps in and he defends Call his cousin st- straight away, and he starts a fight straight away. Angela just stares silently. She doesn't say a word. She's just Paul, like, all these fucking... I reckon she's an alien. She's observing us. I've just been balls deep in aliens this week. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I've just been wow. doing a lot of normally, research. Normally they're um, balls deep in you, aren't they? So that's me to change. Remember when you had that alien... Uh, I, oh, yeah. yeah. I've had that dream as well before when I, I actually dreamt that a spaceship came down and I looked out my window and it was fucking horrible. My actually, like, it was like... Is this shit real or is this a dream? Luckily, it was a dream. But that shit's scary. Yeah. You think it was a dream? That's what they want you to believe. Uh, I know. This is all. Is this everything right now? Just a little made-up stimula- simulation? Stimulation? <laughs> it could be made-up stimulation. <laughs> An audio stimulation. Now, while Ricky is starting a fight with all the kids that are sort of just trying getting to get fucking naked, rowdy, ah, getting really I'm rowdy, Paul, angry. Paul, Paul slides over, says, "Hi, Angela. How are you?" He seems um, like a nice boy. And she's, uh, she, this is where she says her first word. He says, "Well, I'll, I'll go now. Good night." She says, "Good night." And he's quite excited by this. But she, and this is where the writing is like, okay, there's, there's something going on there. You've actually put something to it rather than just the cashing on slasher films, even though it does film a little bit like us cashing on slasher films. Yep, cashing on slasher. It's a casher. I guess they all that evening they all go down to the lake one they dude the lake. is in the a canoe with one of the girls and rocks it and tips it over just just to be a cunt I think let's go night canoeing Gav what's <sighs> that who does that I'm not going night canoeing yeah, yeah the girl swims off he he's under, under the, canoe the canoe and he's breathing in it underneath just go ooh and just you know whatever and, and then, then someone someone pops up yeah but we don't see because it's like the back of the hair and she, he's like what are you doing here so we know it's someone that he knows because obviously we're just that's a good thing with slasher movies yeah they're, they're murder mysteries but with blood and gore which is always quite cool so what i like about this one this movie is it's it's heavily hinted at every kill the person recognizes who it is Whereas in other slasher films, they just scream at the person because it's usually Freddy or Jason or Michael. But in this one, it's like, oh, I know you. <laughs> what are you doing here? That's the same with the first Friday 13th. Oh, yeah, I suppose it is. As well, towards the end, yeah. Uh, no, no, um, earlier on as well. Oh, okay. A, a oh, yeah. Bit. What, what are you doing way out here in the woods? Yeah, 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 I suppose. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, this person drowns this, this guy. And uh, in the morning... The dead body is found floating in the shore, yeah. on the shore of the lake. It's on the lake, and it looks pretty good. Good effects. It's pretty sort of swollen and bloated and rotty. It reminded me a little bit of Laura Palmer in the first Twin Peaks episode. Oh, rest in peace, Laura Palmer. Mm. We still, still think of you. Mm. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, so that's fine. And again, the coroner turns up, and the manager, the owner of the camp, says, "That's quick, quick, quick. There's an accident. There's get cl- the body out of here. Get the Don't... police officer out of here. There's class. There's an accident there. Hey, yeah, officer. Um, he's the just kids haven't seen it. He, yeah, yeah. There's, there's no... come on. No, no, nothing's going on there. Let's keep going. Brilliant. Cut two. Girls playing volleyball. That manager. I tell you, if Mo from The Simpsons was a real person, it's that manager. It so be. he's so like Mo. It's amazing." Mo mixed with the the mayor that we talked about, Amityville yeah. mayor. Yeah. Not Amityville, <laughs> Amity mayor. Um, so the girls are playing volleyball. Angela just watches. And Paul uh, Paul says to her, "Hey Angela, would you like to watch a movie with me later?" And uh, she doesn't say anything to him. But the other girls are getting jealous, so they all come over to her. And sort, of, sort of, oh, why are you so special? Why are the boys talking to you, you freak? Um. But they're just jealous, you know. She's been nice and quiet and I reckon, she's getting to go I reckon Paul knows that she's got the dig and he's into it. Look, Mac from uh, It's Always Sunny was into that. It's, it's Do you know what I mean? Just work around it. Do you know what I mean? If, if, if you find that person attractive, man or woman, and they've got a big old dick, and you're into that as well, then tick all the boxes. Tick your own box. She'll Every, tick your box for you. Everyone's boxes are ticked. My box is well ticked. <laughs> 
Um, moving back. Yes, so after the film, after the movie, Paul and Angela, they hold hands. There's a little... Uh, There's a little bit of a kiss as well. <laughs> uh, later on, uh, the boys in the dorm playing with shaving foam, as boys do. Ricky does try to sort of get with Judy... She says no, and he's like, "Well, too good for you, am I?" So there's a little bit of animosity there between those guys. Yeah, Paul kisses Angela, as you said, and then we forgot to mention that the kid who was playing the video game, his name is Mozart. <laughs> what a weird name for a character! Uh, but Mozart gets shaving foam. Very jackass, brilliant prank. You, you've got to have a prank like this in these sort of films. Slaps him himself in the face with the shape of him. I kind of want to do that to one of my kids. Is that cruel? You could say it's whipped cream and put it on some food, let me eat it. Uh, it's Ooh. worth a laugh, but they're going to have distrust for you. When I was about five or six, my parents were friends with some um, Cypriot, a Cypriot couple. Where's shaving phone come into this? Well, here we go. He asks me to shave... No, um, <laughs> we had we had this really big, elaborate Cypriot curry and everything. And I remember it like, like yesterday. I've got quite a good memory for that weird thing, stuff like this. And I remember afterwards, his wife told came. I was in the kitchen, and it, my mum and this guy's wife were like, "Do you want to play play a joke on Joe?" And I said, "Okay." It was like five or six. What is it? So they got a paper plate and they put a load of shaving foam on it, and they said he's having a rest on the sofa. And he was kind of like, my dad was sat there watching darts on TV and this other bloke was just sort of nodding off with a beer in his hand and they said go up to him and shove this in his face so they made me go up to this random guy who I'd only met like once and shove a load of shame foam in his face I just thought it was brilliant what and, was uh, his reaction? he laughed thankfully he didn't like punch me or something yeah why'd you get low cunt? <laughs> pick you up and throw you and they stopped being friends with that couple ever since yeah. Anyway, are they called the Shaven Foam Couple? The Shaven Foam Gang. <laughs> so there we go. Cool. Um, anyway, next day, Paul and Angela are talking at the lake beach, and Meg berates Angela. Says, "Why don't you ever go in the water or shower with the rest of the girls?" Yeah. Well, there's a there's a pretty big reason Gives for that. Gives them shit. Yeah. It's because I got a dick. <laughs> um. And then, uh, oh, someone slaps Judy. Yeah, um, um, someone sticks up for Angela. I said, leave her alone. And then That's right. Yeah, yeah. Because she says, this is the line she says, she's a carpenter's dream, flat as a board and in desperate need of a screw. It's not too bad, is it? It's, it's pretty funny, um, but also weird. I'm out getting hammered while she's out getting screwed. So Angela <laughs> Angela gets waterboarded. Um, yeah, the kids um, on the roof, they, uh, in their little skimpy uh, non-clothes, throw water balloons at her. Then the angry cousin comes out, so angry. Why are you doing? Ah, ah, like a fucking pit he's, bull. He, he's about 15. So These guys are about 17 or 18. And they he says, all his of ass. you, all of you get down here right now. I'll fucking kill all what of you. What is up with this kid? Jacking it's like his, his mum said, you look after her or I'm going to do something. And he's like, I'm not fucking having that. Well, the guys get told off. They have to come down off the roof. And one of them says, look, I'll join you guys for the baseball game in a minute. I've got to go take a wicked dump first. Yeah. A, what's a wicked dump, Gav? Uh, a big. <laughs> Is that like... At least 15 minutes in the bathroom. What well, wicked is this? It's, like, oh, it's big, it's large, it's grand scale, you know. It's, you fucking, feel... That's wicked big. Wicked... Da, 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 you, know. you can feel it in you, like, I've got to get this out. Yeah. It's okay. like, like I'd say mega. Yeah, a mega shit. Yeah. Well, a wicked dump it is. So he goes in for a poo. And while he's in there, he doesn't know that the door from the outside is barricaded. And then somebody smashes the window into his cubicle. And a bee's nest is thrown in. I, I was d disappointed. We have a knife slashing the the panel. Oh, nice. It's going to be a fucking knife killer. 
No, no. Frozen brings in the bit. It's, it's interesting. Like, in, and with Friday the 13th, it was always like, oh, what's the next kill scene going to be? I was just a bit like, oh, we don't really see it, and we see nothing at all, really. And then that's it, and it's his face. You see some good prosthetic work on, on the Afterwards, the, yeah, again, afterwards, the effects are really good. That's and the again, thing. Gav, this movie has good elements. It just needed someone else to come in and kick its ass a bit, honestly. And again, the owner, Mel, is like, cover it up, don't tell anybody. Yeah, and yeah, like, so it's an like, accident. They're like, Mel, firstly, I'm not sure how much longer we can keep this going on. <laughs> no. Secondly, the police have been here two or three times now. And thirdly, we've only got about two members of staff left. Um, okay, we'll, we'll keep covering this up, Mel, if that's what you really want. But Mel says, I, I, there's a guy responsible for this, I'm sure, I'm sure of it. Now, he's obviously suspecting um, Ricky, because Ricky is a very angry man, as, as we've said, a very angry young man. So. He has spotted the anger. He spotted it. It's not like it's not hard. That's like saying I spotted that beep, David beep, Banner beep, is. Beep, beep, beep. That, it's that one. It's that kid. The one that's screaming at the top of his voice about that uh, a gang of eighteen-year-olds that he wants to fight all of them. It's that one. Angela and Paul. Meantime, they they meet up and they go to the lake and it's very romantic and quite playful. Suddenly, she starts having a flashback to her dad. Vietnam flashback. In bed. With another man. Yeah, so it's, a, it's very interesting. Generally, it's, I don't know how much of cash in this was, though. It's such an interesting story. Or unless they actually had a talented writer. But he generally, not all the time, but you kind of generally write what you know. What was going on here with the writer of this whole fucking story? I line? know, right? So, uh, basically, it turns out her and her brother walked in on her dad in bed with another man... Now, obviously, that was very frowned upon probably back then when they were. So this would have been probably in the seventies. But it's still cheating on his on their mum for something, yeah. which is weird for them. So and also they they watched watched things happening and giggled to themselves while it was happening so as well. W- what was that doing then? What's that, why is that even in there? But then that led to her and her brother in bed touching each other. So there was some more ancestral stuff going <sighs> yeah, on now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we already know that there's some messed up stuff in Angela's head to do with her dad as a closeted homosexual, um, her brother and her potentially touching each other up, and she's got a penis as well. <laughs> yeah. Next day. Icing on the cake. Let's play capture the flag. The rules are simple: capture the flag. Well, All right. It's hey. quite obvious. Brother, uh, not brother. Keep on brother. So it's a cousin. Then he wants to flank. Flank the other guy's flag. Oh, uh, we've all wanted with to Angela. flank another man's flag. Oh, flank. With Sorry. Angela. He wants to do it with Angela. Flank away up into the woods to get the flag. He says to her, flank, if you run off into flank, the woods... Flag flankers. He says to Angela, flank off into Say the woods. Say flag flankers three times quick. Flag flankers, flag flankers, flag flankers. <laughs> you did it. Hold on. He says to her, you go in the woods, they'll all follow you, and I'll go and get the flag and we'll win the whole game. Um, Paul talks to Angela though about her freaking out and she just doesn't really explain why she freaked out in in the middle of them about because he was about to put his hand down her pants and realise there was more but she obviously freaked out the night before so you might have been into it look you've got to give people a chance Um, anyway Ricky and Paul and Judy are all in the woods Uh, they're all playing this game now and hang on a minute Judy decides to seduce Paul right in front of Angela so Angela sees well they do it and then she walks in on on them and your cousin's there as well and he's seen it as well and then he goes back and he's like ah Angela look I'm really sorry about that look I really like you imagine it's a weird movie because like these kids are kind of youngish, so it's real hard watching this. Because like it's like all right, so he's a horny kid. He can't get off this other kid. So this other kid, who's a bit of a sluttier kid, says, "I'll give, I'll show you how it's done." It's all a bit like, Ugh. <laughs> "I'll show you how it's done." Ugh. Yeah, go on. Imagine what. Well, in the meantime, Mel. You said imagine. Is... Imagine this. Oh, you um, said. Oh, I was just going to say, imagine um, you catch your, not your girlfriend, but the person you thought you were going to hook up with. 
with somebody else and then 10 seconds later that person comes to you and says oh i didn't mean it it's like well i just seen you doing it yeah mel starts going on the rampage of the owner he starts saying right this is ricky that's doing all these killings find him let's get him so that that chain of events is un- unfolding yep judy and meg the counselor pick angela up and they're about to throw her in the water and she starts freaking out because obviously she almost drowned when she was a young boy if that makes sense stay with us listeners stay with us stay with us um but she's rescued. Um, and my question here, my next question is, why the fuck does the young, hot girl fancy the owner, Mel? So the owner, Mel, is like this really old, yeah. cigar-smoking whiskey guy. And he's a bit like that Rod- Rodney Dangerfield sort of looking guy. Yeah, he's got the hot counsellor. He's always like can I come back to your cabinet? And he's like, (laughs) okay, yeah, great. What? Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit weird. I don't even know that, but yeah, that is a bit odd, actually. Well, she goes off to shower before the older act, but she is stabbed through the shower wall. You don't see anything. It's funny, you don't see anything psycho. Psycho is a little bit better than this. Um, You don't see anything. It's really a shame. And the counsellors will say, well, one of you drawn the short straw. You did have, just before, a very beautiful shot. I'll give them this. really beautiful shot of Angela standing there with the knife in a silhouette in a doorway. Oh, yeah. That's true. It was a lovely shot, that was. And then it was ruined by not showing anything. One of the counsellors gets the short straw, and he's got to take a few of the boys off into the woods camping. And he's like, oh, come on. And they're like, sorry, dude. This dude's like, yeah, we could go nighttime camping and that. And it's like, we're not taking tents, we're literally a sleeping bag and we sleep out in the open air. And it's probably going to get fucking really fucking cold. And yes, the two kids are like, it's really fucking cold. And that is the best acting in the movie is this kid that look, generally looks really fucking cold. He looks really upset. He looks, it's like really good acting. I was like, man, he's pretty good actually. Um, he's he's like, please, him. please take us home. It's really fucking shit. And he says, all right, you know what? It's all right, cold. and he leaves Let's two go. kids there. No, he leaves a couple of kids there because he's going to come he says, back again. I'll drive you back and then, and then I'll, I'll come, come back. back with the other two. It's like, oh my God, you can't just leave kids camping in the woods by yourself and just drive off. Which means we get more POV shots mm. of a killer. Mm. Uh, Paul begs Angela for forgiveness and says, she says, meet me later. So he's thinking, oh, great, she's forgiven me, that's fine. Meanwhile, Mel, the owner, is looking for Meg, his young shag, and he can't find her anywhere. Judy's making out with another guy. Yep. The guy hides under the bed, and she just kicks him out after that. Yeah. Oh, you better go. And he's like, no, actually, he kicks himself out. He says, oh, I'm going to go. And she's like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, I don't want to get caught. And she says, you pussy, you chicken shit. Yeah. She's such a slut, this girl, isn't she? <laughs> I don't have to slap for those words. She's just a horrible person. She's not very nice. Not a very nice girl. Nope. Well, Judy gets knocked out anyway. And I don't know what this death is about, but hair straighteners are used in a very horrible way. But I, I can only imagine because you where don't see, placed. you don't see it though. Again, like, uh, where, what do you suspect is done with these hair straighteners? Oh, I suppose. Yeah, I guess. The Vingita. Yeah, I think she's penetrated with them and killed in such a manner. I guess. But you don't see it. It's just a bit lacklustre. All the death scenes are just so lacklustre. Meanwhile, Mel's finding more bodies, more bodies, more bodies. Um, This is where Mel sees Ricky and he grabs him and he starts sort of beating him up. (laughs) He's just beating up this kid. I know it was you. You're killing all these people in the camp, you sick fuck. The police are going to come here. It's like, if the police get there, they're going to see that you've beaten this child to death. Really um, fucking beats this kid up. Really, really kicks the shit out of him. But then the man just shot in the neck by an arrow. Yep, an arrow straight through the throat. Cops turn up, and there's a killer on the loose. Yep, there's a panic at the camp now. Everyone's running around. Angela meets Paul. Says, she says, take your clothes off. Take your clothes off, Paul. And he's thinking, ding, ding, let's do this. Let's do this. People are dying around. It's perfect timing. Let's go. Uh, 
Ricky is fine. He's just just about alive. Yeah, I thought he could be dead. Being that. And the cops. Why has the cop got such a bad fake moustache, Gav? I don't know. It's fucking terrible. Did, did you see it? It's yeah, so yeah. bad. Yeah. It's so bad. It's one of the first bits of trivia on IMDb. <laughs> but anyway, the cop says, uh, "Right, we'll go. We'll go find the other people. Keep these guys together." And they head off to the shore. And this is where they find Angela. Oh, there's Angela. Oh, she's in the head. Uh, stroking the guy's head. Yeah, it seems both, to be like she's lying seems to be on naked. Her lap. She's sitting away from it. It's really, this this scene is quite well done for how just just disturbing it is. And she turns around, basically stands up, and the head's just not attached to the body, and she's there with a penis and a big knife in her hand. And there's like, uh, and then we don't know what happens then. And then, <laughs> then we get then we so, get the flashback. Of, what do you think actually happened after that, Angela? Well, what's going on? You've you've got. A, a dick and there's no head. Both of them are traumatised. That's for straight. Even well, the cop. And, and Paul, Paul's been beheaded, you know, so they've seen a beheaded person. So she, she, I don't know, there's other movies, isn't there? Have you seen them? Yeah, yeah, I have, yeah. Does it follow on? Uh, I don't remember that well. I'll get into those in a moment. It must do. But I just want to talk about the, so the flashback, really, as we discussed, is basically that yeah, she yeah. was Explains, to, to live it? like a girl yeah. by her crazy auntie. Um, but the ending, the reason it looks so weird as well is because they, they had a Mo mask had, made. I think Mo had to do that as well when in The Simpsons when he was a kid, dressed as a, a little girl. <laughs> I think his mum did that to him. Funny. Um, well, the reason it looks so weird is because they made a mask of Felicia Rose, the actress, but it could they could only move the eyes. through. So that's why it's... it's not moving at all with just the mouth gaping open and then they put that over the body of this like young lad i think he was like 17 or 18 um and yeah it just looks so strange and dreamlike and nightmarish and that's why a lot of people remember this film because that weird weird ending really and And i think the last word to the cop the cop just says something like oh my god angela she's she's a guy hmm and then that's it. Mm. So there we go. So before we look at the sequels, that was the first of a couple of sequels, Sleepaway Camp 1983. I'm a fan of it. It's cheesy. It's got some terrible wardrobe choices in it, which I'm always a fan of. And it's got a really memorable ending. I agree with you. The camera work is definitely something that could have been better, as is the the sound production and the score some of the ideas though are very good there is some really good stuff woven into this from a first time director so I like it what about you Gav? Uh, there's a couple of things here which are alright um, but um, yeah it's first time director but there's some movies with first time directors which are amazing so I, you know um, I don't know uh, I don't I give it a thumbs down and I don't recommend it um, I, I just I'm bored I was really really bored of it it's just like it's just like I don't know if it's now uh, in the world where we move so quickly and watch things are quick but no not that I'm old school I can watch a long movie doing nothing it just I don't know it pains me to watch it and makes me want to just watch Friday the 13th well I knew Gav wasn't a big fan of it when he messaged me not long after watching it and saying do you want my VHS copy of this? And I said, absolutely, thank you very much. Yeah, I do apologise, and I don't want to come across all like, because mm, I know no, I, always I think you, am the one you, that does that. No, but I think you've been honest. Um, and I well, think, yeah, I'm not going to lie. You know. I think, um, but you said, like, there are some really good elements to it. There's, there's um, cool, f- I, I swear, I, if you had someone else come in and just oversee the whole thing, be like, from the get-go, and be like, yeah, no, let's fucking move the cat, take the camera off the tripod, just fucking walk over there with it, just move it in and out, and then like, oh, let's let's do this in the post, let's make let's make this a bit wider and sound, and the death scenes, let's think about these, let's move the camera in there and actually show some things, just a few little bits here and there would have made this film elevate it to another level, I feel. Well, that was eighty three, and then they made a sequel in 1988 yeah, there's a few of them so I guess it's a bit of a fan I guess it, there might even be people who've just fucking searched for this movie found our show and are listening to this before or for this film because they love it so much and I do apologise but I've obviously got to have my own opinion um, well or Camp Sleepaway 2 Unhappy Campers came out in 1988 I 
rated that six as, years later. Yeah, I rated that as a five out of ten. I'm presuming Sleepaway Camp didn't uh, break the box office charts like they thought it was going to. The synopsis is Angela, supposedly reformed and living under an assumed surname, now works at a summer camp. However, when the campers start misbehaving, she reverts to her old ways. Okay. Then we got uh, cut te- slap. Oh, put the teeth back oh, in. What? Sleepaway Camp Three: The Teenage Wasteland in 1989. After murdering a young girl, Angela Baker assumes her identity and travels to Camp New Horizons, built on the grounds of the old camp that she had terrorised years before, and she starts her killing spree again. Okay. Then in 2008. We got Return to Sleepaway Camp. Now, the interesting thing about uh, Return to Sleepaway Camp. Pretty shit. As you can imagine, it came out in 2008. There's a massive gaps between these movies. Well, then, Sleepaway Camp uh, 4, The Survivor, came out in 2012. Okay. That was an unfinished film. Why? Because they ran out of budget, time, money, patience, and there's about 30 minutes of footage shot, which I've seen, and it's apparently on the box set. If you buy the box set of all the movies... It didn't finish the film. Pres- like, what, what on earth went wrong there? Some very bad <laughs> calculations went wrong on that film in prep. Like, what? Yeah. What? why did that? Unless they were just... Unless the money literally just said, yeah, there's no more money, that's it, and they were hoping for some, I guess. What the fuck? Yeah. That's not good. Um, And they were going to be doing... They were going to do Sleepaway Camp Reunion. Can I not review any of these and you can review all of them for a Patreon episode? Maybe. It might be very dark. I'll I'll review all of them for a Patreon episode if you pay enough. There we go, guys. (laughs) So that's it. I wouldn't... Personally, I wouldn't recommend any of the sequels. Um, But... I personally would recommend the first one if you are a fan of slashers and or horror. It is a cult film, mainly because of the ending. I agree with Gavin that the main body of the, the film is it's been done better in a lot of other films. But it's fun Friday night flick. Yeah, and I totally get where you're coming from. And I totally understand why there's a thing for it, the film. Um, it's not trying to be fucking Apocalypse Now. You know, it knows what it is. And um, I can respect that, um, but uh, I won't be watching it again myself. So that's 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 my thing. So you give it a thumbs up, I give it a thumbs down, and you know that's how we should be in a review of a podcast. Indeed, film there we review go. show. Well, I see well, a little. I see a little person over there. It's Bill Murray. Bill Murray. Oh, can you see him there? Oh, where is he? He's over there. Bill Murray. Bill Murray. Ghostbusters. Murray, Bill Murray. Ghostbusters. World of the strangers coming for you. Well, he's very patiently sat and t- let let us talk through Sleepaway Camp. So I think we give him his time to shine as he introduces us to World of the Strange. Bill. He just said sleeping camp because he was asleep. Bill. Okay. He's been asleep a lot. Bill. Hi, welcome back to World of the Strange. World of the Strange. World of the Strange. World of the Strange. Strange world. Welcome. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Word of the Strange, Strange World. Um, got two stories for us this time, Gav. My fridge keeps making weird sounds. Your fridge? Oh, is that the body that's in there? No, but I'm expecting it to open and there's like this little fucking creature going, Zool! Or Pennywise when he climbs out of that fridge oh in the, uh, the remake of it. it. Fucking... <laughs> So it's so, like martial art movies and shit. You got to think Jackie Chan. That's how you got to think when any crisis happens. Think Jackie Chan. What around you is the first thing? Everybody, right now, look around you. The first thing, literally, you could pick up and use as a weapon. What I've is it? I've got a nest of three tables to my left. Mine's this microphone right in front of me. 
So Jackie Chan is famous with for using small tables and stools to beef up baddies. So So that's how you gotta think people's. So this fucking that fucking big old fucking clown sticks his head out my fridge. You're hitting him with a microphone. It's getting mic'd. Nice. You've been you've been mic'd. I have like Mike some fucking Yeah, but you'd say mic drop is what you'd say. <sighs> mic drop. Yeah, boy. Nice. Sorry about the feedback. So <sighs> you could say. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, we're not here to talk about this. We didn't, <laughs> we didn't fly. We didn't fly Bill um, Pullman. Bill Murray. Oh, it's Where's Bill, Bill Murray. Pullman here? <laughs> Bill Paxton. We've resurrected oh. him. Um, no, we didn't fly Bill Murray all the way here just to talk about your fridge and Jackie Chan, although that's a subject I'd talk about forever. We talked... It's not we've, a show, isn't it? Come here to talk about, what, Jackie Chan and fridges. Yeah. <laughs> just Jackie Chan recommending different fridges. <laughs> White, go- White goods with Jackie. <laughs> this week... I found a great Samsung microwave that I'd like to talk to you all about. Next week, I'll be looking at this hot point dishwasher. Just Jackie Chan loading up dishes. <laughs> just weirdest shit ever, man. It double bill with vanilla ice golf course making. <laughs> Landscaping. <laughs> we, could, we could do MC Hammer's DIY time. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> come on, <clears throat> come on. What the strange? Right, so there's two stories. Uh, one of them comes from yourself and the other one is from my wife so I don't know why I sounded like <laughs> me and your wife yeah Christopher Walken no I said the other one is from my wife <laughs> my wife my wife <laughs> um, so the, the first one from yourself this first story is about big hairy mammoths yeah Scientists are planning on bringing back the woolly mammoth. Yeah, uh, and not, not not too near future. There, yeah. There's a, there's a um, relative of the woolly mammoth, which is uh, not too far away in DNA, so um, they can. Is it, it's a company that's been made specifically to do this called Colossal. What <laughs> crazy billionaires funding this? Uh, probably Elon fucking Musk or someone. This is this is not going to end well, is it? We're going to be running around. Well, I don't know mammoths. how. Well, it's, it'll get tested straight away. Then everyone will just stare at it in a, a zoo. And then, um, would it survive in the atmosphere nowadays of uh, the temperature of the planet? You know, well, it's, I suppose. Side note: I heard on the news today that they've they've worked out that it wasn't just one meteorite that wiped out the dinosaurs. They think that a second meteorite hit Africa on the same day, so they had two meteorites hit, which caused a ten-year winter, which killed the dinosaurs. Do you, do you realise nowadays, because of uh, the planet getting a lot warmer, faster than it was uh, was previously? Um, we've probably averted the fact that there won't be another ice age. Well, we've can fuck the planet, haven't we? Well, because it well, it's going to be too warm. Now, Harvard University genetics professor George Church is the man behind this. He's got 15 million worth of funding to start with. Hmm. Obviously, he's looking for people to donate to help with this project. And he set up this company, Colossus. Crazy billionaires, look over here! <laughs> He hopes that this company can bring in a new era where mammoths can walk the Arctic again. But why? But why, Gav? Because he can. That's why. Because he can. Because he can. It's literally the only reason. But he thinks that they can play a part in combating climate change. That's interesting. And uh, what will be the first <clears throat> restaurant to uh, put it on their menu? Oh... Mammoth burger. It'd be on there so quickly. Bing. Be some Have fucking sh- lunatic with sunglasses in a shiny gold suit. Chops it really quickly. Come to my mammoth restaurant. It's eight thousand pound a plate. It'll just be um, a muck mammoth. Yeah, I don't think McDonald's going to take it on. They might do. <clears throat> he says we're working towards bringing back a species who left an ecological void when they went extinct. 
Colossal, my company, actively pursues the conservation and preservation of endangered species. We're identifying species that can be given a new set of tools from their extinct relatives to survive in new environments that desperately need them. Mm. So what is being proposed here is a hybrid created using a gene editing tool known as crispr Queso. That's the name of the program which splices bits of DNA recovered from frozen mammoths uh, into that of Asian elephants. The closest relative. The closest living relatives. And the resulting animal, <clears throat> which will be known as a mammophant... Fuck's sake. That was my nickname at school. <laughs> would, look, <laughs> ...would look and presumably behave much like a woolly mammoth. Thoughts so far? Uh, I'm intrigued um, if they can do that that's going to be a weird thing and once they've done that it's going to be what can we do next yeah um, what's next it's like what DNA have we got next what will we prove we can do this so um, I don't know it's interesting um, yeah why not the world's weird as fuck why not Mr Church believes that resurrecting the animal would plug a hole in the ecosystem left by the decline about 10,000 years ago um, the largest mammoth stood more than 10 feet high, and some of them weighed as much as 15 tons. And they used to scrape away the layers of snow so that the cold air could reach the soil beneath, beneath and maintain the permafrost. So they did actually help, you know, the, the, wor the world, the ecosystem at that point. It's, it's, in, it's interesting, but I think it's all an excuse so that you can play with, you know, genetics as well. Yeah. Um, but after the mammoths died, all of the extra snow that's no longer getting wiped away with its insulating properties means that the permafrost, permafrost underneath the snow started to melt, which released greenhouse gases. So he's got, he's done his research, you know, he's got $15 million, he's done his some research, and I can see he's got a point. I just don't know if bringing back extinct mammals is the way to do it. Maybe we should just treat our planet better. Yeah, but... Um... It's, yeah, it's... How long is it until we're cloning humans? Bringing back a saber-toothed tiger, let's bring one of those back. What? How good would that be? Have Have we... I just never really looked into it. Have we tried cloning humans? <coughs> I know, well, it's unethical, and, and yeah, that's so why we, it's, it would be against, it'd be against an, uh, a worldwide law of unethics. Yeah, there, there, there is a worldwide law against it. Yeah. But I can guarantee... It's someone out there has happened. tried it. Yeah, because we've cloned Dolly the sheep. Hmm. Um, you know, there's there. been animal cloning. So yeah. somebody out there is probably a clone. You think, more... you think it's been done? You're, you're moving into a whole other world of the strange. Now, Me and you, we, we might be clones. We might be clones. My wife fully believes that Avril Lavigne is no longer the original Avril Lavigne. She will sit there and tell you for hours on end that she's actually a clone of the original Avril Lavigne because there's slight differences in her sound and her look. Is this a thing? This is the thing, Gab. Eminem apparently died and was cloned. Can we, can we, can we this bit of World of the Strange? We can do this for another time. I think we might have even covered this when let's we did it, let's do it again. the body snatches. Let's just do Avril Lavigne. Oh my God, not like that. Whoa. <laughs> Why do you have to go make things so complicated? That's one of her songs. <laughs> Back to Bully Mammoths. I don't know any of her songs. I can't try and make some jokes. Skater Boy. Yeah. I can't believe we've got onto Avril Lavigne. <laughs> you start with Kevin Baker's penis. <laughs> I always start with Kevin Piggy's penis and I always finish on Avril Lavigne. That's how every good party goes. <laughs> Chuck a woolly mammoth in there somewhere along the way. There we go. Should be a vagina, really, if you start with his penis. And a chick with a dick, with a big knife in her hand. Um, again, the, the owner of this company, Colossus, says, I personally don't think there will be any terrible impact on the planet or the climate. Of course you don't, because you want everyone's money so that you can start this project properly. Yeah. Saying that his techniques might be better to, better used to help the species that are already alive, but they are endangered. What about uh, the gases they could produce? Yeah, they're going to do a lot of firing, aren't they? If they're 15 tonnes... Like, but... it's not good, the, the, the cattle we have now, that 
produces the gas. So that's not going to be good, surely. Mm. Sounds to me like he's got a lot of money. He's watched Jurassic Park. Mm. He likes elephants. He's thought, hang on a minute. Oh. He, he wants to see a hairy elephant, mm. basically. He thinks he can get all this t- together in six years. Wonder what, so, what, what, what's what's the hairy elephant going to think when he meets? Yeah, well, what's the elephant going to think when he meets? His, well, he's not going to know. He's yeah. just going to be like, "Hi, I'm a mammoth," and the other elephants will be like, "Why are you so hairy?" Uh, what the fuck's up with you? Then the mammoth just going to turn around and say, "I'm the fucking, I'm the one." With I'm the, all of your granddads. I'm the one that knocks. It's going to jump on his back and start humping. But also, he's going to be like, "Fuck me, it's hot here." I can see why you lot all shave your fur off. Oh, you're the dominant one, the hairy one, the big master. I. <laughs> You've gone down a very dark room <laughs> with this. I don't even know. There we go. Well, that's the first story, and that was ironically that was from you, and it's ended with you going down. The, <laughs> you talking about a dark, hairy, dominant master. <laughs> And I don't know what that says about our friendship, but I'm yeah, all for it. I don't it. even know what was going on there myself. So. Well, there we go. Uh, we'll we'll summarise that one in a bit. Let's just do the story that my wife sent me, though, which is about a traumatised family living in the north of England who, okay. were pa- who had a sort of real-life paranormal poltergeist event. And Sweet. then they left. They left their home after seven months. And I'll post this story up on the Facebook page. Is this page. a recent thing then? It's quite recent. There's pictures of bruising um, on oh. on the people, um, finger marks and stuff like that. Let's so go, let's go investigate it then. <clears throat> it's in. Uh, it's near Newcastle. It's in Teesside. Yeah. So you know, this was. You asked if it was recent. This was the end of July this year. So only you know less than a month ago as we record. Here we go. A petrified family in Teesside claimed that they fled their home in the middle of the night following a series of paranormal activities and traumas. So already I've sucked you in with that line. Mm -hmm. Your dark dominant hairy master has sucked you in. (laughs) I was just talking about the woolly mammoth. I'm not even meaning you. It doesn't matter. I know how you feel about me now. It's always about Um, me. It's always about me. Um, So they started renting the house uh, in the November of the year before, and they started noticing strange, abnormal things happening. This included the the mum, Mrs. Misroth, getting bruises out of nowhere on her arms and legs. Okay. Sometimes lights would turn on or off on their own. So your your classic poltergeist that we've seen from... Her son would wake up screaming in the middle of the night. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, her and her husband Stephen, along with her two two children, Arabella and Caleb, only lasted seven months before fleeing the property. In the final weekend, they hit breaking point when six-year-old Caleb started screaming in the middle of the night. She said she believes in spiritual things, so when weird stuff started happening a month into their tenancy, she thought, this doesn't feel right to me. She said, it got to the point where my son was talking to somebody regularly. They used to sleep all night with no problems at all, but he'd wake up in the night, stand at the top of the stairs, staring, and sometimes talk to someone. She said, her son often said, there's someone in my room. Someone's been in my room. Someone's been watching me while I've been sleeping. Mm -hmm. And her four-year-old said, Mummy, there was a cat in my room last night, and in the morning, she had scratch marks all over her. Okay. She said things were getting moved around the house. A few items even got thrown down the stairs while we were, you know, downstairs. Something would just fly down the stairs that was at the top of the stairs. How strange. That was very spooky. She woke up in the night and said, It felt like someone was choking me. And it wouldn't know it wasn't her husband. Hmm. The house, which is only about 60 years old, uh, has a has a spate of weird historical incidents, but they don't go into what those are, which is a shame. I'd like to know if someone was murdered there or strangled. Yeah, or a cat. Totally. yeah. So what, what they've left the house, and what is no one there now? 
Um, I don't know. I, I'll look at that bit at the bottom of the story. So the family were relaxing in the, in the garden one evening around 8 p.m. They put Caleb to bed and they heard him saying, Get off me! Leave me alone! Mummy, help me! Imagine hearing your six-year-old screaming, Get off me! Get off me! You'd think, well, I'm going up there to kick someone's ass. She said uh, her brother and her, who was visiting her, so the uncle was visiting at the time, ran up there and realised, oh, it's probably just a nightmare. But as soon as I said it's only a nightmare, the bathroom light just turned off on its own. So that night at 2am, we decided enough's enough. I have to look round me then, make sure there's nothing coming in. The light's flashing in the kitchen. That night, we jumped in a taxi and we left the house. They now live in a caravan on the neighbour's driveway. <laughs> They're about to move into their new home. Oh, That's good. how scared they were. So who's got the, that home? Mm. Weird events also included the son sleepwalking around the house and stopping and staring at weird things. Um, they had paranormal investigators come around who said if he wants us to go... <laughs> Stop and staring at weird things, what? They've got things around the house which are weird. The, the things that... The, uh, the objects are just weird, and he's <laughs> yeah, just like looking a, at them. Like a pickled penis is, is in that a jar. What saying? <laughs> <laughs> he's, just, he's just looking at the weird things. <laughs> um, apparently, the, the paranormal guys that they hired walked into the house and said, if you want us to go and leave this property now, then turn off the light, and the lights all went off in the house. <sighs> if mine goes off, man. Honestly, if that goes off, if I go into darkness... Don't do not do that. Don't do that. Because I remember that last time. time. My, yeah. Uh, my door slammed. Jesus. Fucking hell. Anyway, that's that, actual spookiness that was. That's the story that my wife sent me. It kind of just ended okay. they, they left the house. But her son's been traumatised. He doesn't like going upstairs in other houses. That house, that's so <laughs> soon. Not long ago. Sorry to apologise and knocking in there. Um, uh, that house is probably still empty at the moment then. Yeah, and there's a picture of it on there, and I will share this article on our Facebook page, so Ooh. if you really want to go and track this house down, you, you can. Uncle Sarah's um, going to listen to it. She's be like, come on, let's get going. There's photos of the bruising, and they e there's even a photo that they put talcum powder down Yeah. Uh, by the door, and there's weird sort of, I don't know what you'd call them, like marks that could be feet, it could be like weird Dragon. claws. It's like little claws in the token powder by the door. It's really spooky. I'm getting goosebumps looking at it, actually. It's a bit weird. And the bruising's really weird as well. Oh, um, share, share them pictures. It's kind of like if the if an octopus grabbed you. You know, they've got, like, suckers all up them. Yeah. The bruises are all, like, spots all up her arm, like an octopus tentacle suckers. Weird. Yeah. But there we go. I don't want to go there. Word of the Strange, big hairy mammoths. And evil unhappy poltergeists yeah what do you think both real uh yes both strange strange definitely worldly uh which one would you rather was fake the woolly mammoth yeah okay so you'd rather the children were traumatised okay well that's where we, I'm we land on I'm happy with that <laughs> Well, that's World of the Strange. So thank you to my wife and to you, Gav, for sending those stories in. You're Guys, welcome. I probably never say this, but if you've ever got a story, and some of you do send them, you don't even need to send them. Just tag me and Gav on Facebook, on the Facebook page, the podcast Facebook page, weird in stuff. a weird story. You know, we've had guys with their penises attached to their arms. We've had it all over the years. <laughs> yeah. <It's brilliant. laughs> that, uh, that fella. That, uh, that fella with his little willy arm. What about that woman who was eating her husband's ashes? Because she's like, I'm addicted to eating him. Uh, that was just pretty wrong, wasn't it? Yeah. And that guy that, that there was that guy that was trying to fuck his car. You know, it's, it's just, just a dick arm. I love that though because it's like, well, we've got to attach it there because then it's going to make produce the right cells. Then we can put it. You know, amazing. You've got a I dick know. in your arm. Dick arm. Dick arm. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? It's so weird. Do you reckon he'd get bonus with it? He'd be in the X-Men, wouldn't he? Like, instead of Wolverine with his claws. Well, surely, surely, because it'd be all normally attached, and he'd be able to get a boner on his arm. Have no, you... he, wouldn't, he wouldn't be able to do it get a boner. It was just there, sort of, no, I guess. not not rotting, basically. be weird, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, imagine that when you're in the shower, you just got this... It's just when you've got to clean it. You're in the shower cleaning your dick, and it's on your arm. It's fucking weird. 
It's gonna fucking. It could be worse. You could have one on each arm. Yeah, that'd be even. That'd be really weird. Could be like one of these is not mine. I don't know which one it is. One final question before we finish, because Bill's getting agitated with this discussion. It's a weird fucking discussion. Where would you, if I was to remove your bollocks, oh, where would you, where would you want you them? Where, where would you want them reattached? The, the testicles are so annoying. Why can't it be inside the body? It's so fucking like, uh, where attached? I'll give you some. I'll give but you they, multiple they, choice. You've got the. You know what it's like. Like, even the slightest flick and you're fucking paralysed on the ground so here we they've go they've got to be somewhere under the armpits one under each well, armpit funny enough that was, you've got you've got three choices no that's it that's absolutely the best honestly that's the best place to go I was going to say one under each armpit one behind each ear or under your chin <laughs> <laughs> no not chin under the beard because it's too likely you're going to get hit and the armpits is the best one. How but... often do you get hit in the chin? Well, <laughs> I don't know, but there's more chance. <laughs> You're a boxer. I don't know. It's definitely going to stop any uh, contact for us fighting, though, isn't it? Um, but it'd be like, you know, like some people who've got large balls, they sometimes but got a bit of a stride <laughs> as they walk. So if you see a bloke with a stride on his walk, he's probably got big nuts, and it hurts him to have his legs together. People would be like that for their arms. Their arms yeah, would be but, sticking out at like, angles. With their yeah, balls. But if you wear a vest, you've got a ball out each side of your vest. Yeah, and hopefully you don't get smelly balls from your armpit there. Do you have well, to spray your deodorant on your, ball, your armpit balls? Oh, that would sting. Oh. No, they're, they're designed armpit ball deodorant, so. Well, I don't know how we got onto this because we talked about poltergeist and woolly mammoths. Never, but I'd ever, like to thank... ever thought I'd think there's probably possibly a product that could be made to, for the testicles under your armpits. Yeah. Well, talking to big penises, I think it's probably time we talked about um, Friday the 13th. So, Bill, thank you very, very much for uh, all of this. If you can take us out of here. Thank bye. you. Please. That's all the time we've got for this week on World of Strange. Next week, though, give me Ira. Hairless pets. Weird. Friday the 13th from 1980. A group of camp counselors trying to reopen a summer camp called Crystal Lake, which has a grim past 
are all stalked by a mysterious killer. Very famous film, this one. Started a franchise of which there's about 13 or 14 films plus a crossover. Um, it's my favourite slasher franchise. I have a tattoo of Jason on my arm. Uh, mine too. I don't have a tattoo Friday the 13th inspired. Uh, I thought Halloween was yours. It used to be. Uh, it used to be. And then I had a change. Um... The first Halloween is phenomenal. And the second one, even, it but. is, but then it, yeah, um, it's just one of those things. It's not, it's not like the Friday the Thirteenth. So they have quite a thing. Um, once you get obviously to the hockey mask episodes, you yeah. then from then on, it's it's a, the same things. There's a, a, a there's a style. There's something to them all. And it all keeps the same formula for them all, which yeah, everyone started just loving and enjoying. Um, and they're just fun. They're just really really fun movies. You know what you're getting ready. So, yeah, I love I love Friday the Thirteenth ones. I have all my slasher films, and I love the slasher genre. Um, we should talk about Sean S. Cunningham. Yeah, a fella worked with Wes Craven and produced porn, as far as I believe. And obviously, they did. He made um with Wes um, what's that movie? Uh, House uh, Last House on the Left. Last House on the Left. Yes, yeah, so I made that one, which was sort of a bit. Bit rough around the edges, and a he bit, also bit directed a scene in Nightmare on Elm Street in 1984. Just one scene, Wes Craven asked him to direct, and they were very close friends. Him okay. and Wes, right. uh, producer, um, director, and probably his most famous work really is Friday the 13th movies. But whenever you see Sean S. Cunningham come up at the start of something, I always think I'm probably going to enjoy this whether he's directing it or producing it. I think this was the only one he directed. Um, but yeah, and what a brilliant directorial debut, Gav. Mm. Uh, really yeah. original stuff, although it kind of rips <clears throat> off um, Bay of Blood and Halloween. Um, it does it in a way that doesn't feel like it's ripping those off. I like I said, it has uh, come from uh, them just going out with like what's a good title <clears throat> starting there and going okay cool Friday the 13th you know it's it's a it's Halloween Friday the 13th they've basically taken the same model which has just been sort of cemented uh, into the horror world and um, then going great and then making this poster and then sending it out and people go oh yeah we want to see that film because it was slashes at that point were hot shit so um, that's what happened but luckily they, they kind of then they were actually putting a right movie in there and stuff um, yeah great cast as well imagine if uh, Wes Craven had directed it very different but still would have been awesome it'd be a, a, a record been pretty good um, but uh, it's actually yeah, it's really competently uh, d- directed I don't know if, or it's really well cast and they all know what they're doing because Betsy Palmer is like a seasoned act- actor and she um, would have been able to come in and pr- she probably might have asked for direction. I have no idea. Um, but if he was like f- not knowing what he was doing, I reckon with Sean Cunningham. For looking at his behind the scenes stuff in like documentaries, I reckon he is a, sh- a short director and he knew what he was doing and what he wanted. I would think. I think I'm going to go. As and it's far quite well me- directed. I'm going to go as far as to say as this is a movie gods movie. This is. Uh, lightning in a bottle because there's so many bits that, that, that work sh- that were and it, if one of them slightly moved to the left or the right this wouldn't have worked mm-hmm. but you had everyone in the cast was really believable and likable it's, a, it's um, a good formula it was the pov stuff the music like like you talked about earlier when we talked about why the burning didn't have a theme this has got a theme you know, it's got Jason's theme. Eventually, it became. You've you got know. that going on. You've got Tom Savini's effects, and oh wow, it, um, uh, you've got these kids that are really quite up for doing stuff. Kevin Bacon um, and kids of around that age, really like energy, just up for doing whatever. They're at a camp, whatever. It's like a movie. I don't know. It's everything going on is just really decent. I love the little town just outside the camp as well. And although this isn't the first slasher to do this type of thing it certainly has laid the rules for other slashers since such as the town loony that would sort of say mm. it's got a death curse and all that kind of stuff you the know harbinger of death 
Yeah, it's, so it's so much going on. Also, we've got a final girl in this, you know, uh, which is a blueprint that was already laid before this. But yeah, and it's got a twist ending, which we hadn't really seen before. Maybe Carrie, um, but you don't really get many twist endings, especially in horror films. It's quite decent. Um, I love the play on the POV, and it's done quite well. Yeah, it's a re- it, Betsy Palmer's pretty good. Um, acting's really good and it. it's just the way she's just quite natural at doing it and she plays like schizo like really well yeah. like really yeah. really well like just like kill him mummy kill him like oh my god yeah she's basically being her son imagine her if you're there imagine if you're there then you're a woman like oh great this 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 lady's turned up to help me oh great can you help me mrs mrs Voorhees? Um, and then just like she just does that, starts talking to herself. That voice be like, "Oh my but god!" It's what such the an fuck? effective voice. It sounds so scarily like a child. Kill him. And get she's, her. I think get she's her. quite respected. I think she's a quite well-known actor, uh, at least in like in television. People have seen it on their own television sets. Um, yeah, she was. So I think her doing this role as well probably made people go, "What the shit!" And it's great though, really, because you only have to pay her to come in for like uh, two days. Yeah, she's only in really the last act, you know. And then the re- although she's in the whole movie, but she's not technically. She's not because it's all so PSV. It's, it's a sweet gig, really, doing that for everybody. And again, that that saves money on yeah, the budget, yeah. you know. So it's decent. And, and it's, it's like a, Drew Barrymore and Scream, isn't it? Really? Oh. She, I loved how she wanted to be killed off. She was like, just kill me off in the opening scene. Yeah, it's that psycho thing. Brilliant. Good stuff. So, yeah, we, well, we've kind of shown our hands a little bit here that we, we, we're we fans of this film. Um, but, yep. you know... Surprised we've not talked about it. Yeah, and what we're going to be doing, guys... Sometimes is... surprised some of the films we have talked about. <laughs> <laughs> I think what we're going to be looking to do, guys, is every summer from this, from this episode, so next summer, we'll be doing the next two in the franchise so next summer you can expect us to cover Friday the 13th part 2 and 3 and so on and so on I've got the um, DVD box set signed by old Kane Hodder um, who's a very nice gentleman Um, but I've also got the Blu-ray box set so I watched this I can't wait to watch those others Um, I might put one on again soon actually when we get to them for the review for the next episode for the two and part three but watching this one it was so nice to see in high definition I was like wow I was reading like the tin cans and the makes of things and the shelves in the back when they're in the kitchen and stuff in the shack it was really really like wow crystal it's, clear and the effects effects held up fairly well as well it's not often that you feel like the sense of geography is there but with this movie you mm. feel like you kind of get where everybody is in the camp. It's, you've got like the archery section. You've got the the cabins. Yeah, you're right. You've got the lake. It's a very competently you know. made film. Mm-hmm. Like I think the direction was definitely assured. You know. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Well, well, let's get into it because we start weirdly in 1958. Another thing I like about this is a very contained movie, and it's very rainy. Actually, there's a lot of rain. Yeah, there's a lot of rain. Yeah. There is. So yes, yes. Where are we, Dan? 958, Camp Crystal Lake. we got some very Christian kids singing Kumbaya, my lord, Kumbaya. And they're all sort of singing it, apart from two of them, who are like, oh, 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 and they really are staring at each other. And they, they go off together to the barn for a little bit of, uh, how's your father? How's your father? Yeah. A little roll in the hay. Oh, what I love about this, though, is as they step out of the room, because this, this group of kids are so like into their music, these two step out of the room and they just someone else picks up the guitar and they just launch straight into Hallelujah. Everyone's versed in the fact that like, if someone drops the guitar, pick up the guitar. Just carry on. First person, if you need a guitar, pick up the guitar, know the chords for the song. It doesn't matter, just go. Go, What are we doing? Go. It doesn't matter, as Don't long as it's think, religious. Go. So they go off to the barn, like we said, and they are upstairs. They lie down. They start getting ready for a bit of a... <whistles> hide the sausage and all that business. And we get a POV of somebody sneaking in the barn. A little bit of hot dogging. Oh, God, not that again. And uh, someone sneaks in the barn and climbs up to where they are. And they see... Oh, Johnny, someone's there. 
and he's like, oh, sorry, I, uh, we weren't doing anything, I swear. It's like, well, you were. You both had your knickers around your ankles, so... Definitely, pretty, definitely you were. were. Definitely up to something. Uh, and they're both horrifically killed. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we get the title. Uh, we zoom in on freeze frame on the girl's scream, actually, which I absolutely love. Works yeah. so well. And then you get yeah that title like the is this the one where it smashes the screen like when it hits it? No, that's when you get like, that's one of the later ones. And stuff. Yeah, okay, yeah. but it's still also when we get the score, and the score itself is fantastic anyway. But yeah. the whole like ch- ch- bit that they've throughout it. Yeah, and Harry Harry Manfred Friedini. Uh, was that how you pronounce his name? Yeah, Harry Manfred did the score. Uh, it's it's just brilliant. And for anybody that doesn't know, the, where that weird ch ch comes from is they basically used Betsy Palmer, who plays Mrs. Voorhees. They took some of her dialogue. She says things like, Jason, kill. and kill her. And they used the ch of Jason and the k of kill, so the ch ch k are all little snippets of stuff she said. I don't really know the idea behind it. All I know is that it fucking works. Um, as far as I can imagine, he was um, maybe having a bit of a memory blo- not a, a bit of a writer's like block. Writer's so to block. Yeah. Um, I was about to say memory block, writer's block. I guess I don't really believe in writer's block, really, personally. <clears throat> um, and uh, we, just, we just decided to do some sampling and play around with words because it wouldn't it sampling would have been then very sort of still early stages, so he would have been playing on his keyboard. Uh, and he must have just taken a bit of a dialogue. It could even, it possibly could even been by accident. I think he has talked about it before. Yeah, it's on one of the documentaries. Yeah. And there's, there's many documentaries on these movies. Um, the other good thing to see it's during great, the credits. <clears throat> the other thing that always gives me a great sense of uh, happiness is seeing Tom Savini pop up on the credits. So we know we're in for some fantastic gore. And it is when like a lot of these people are still hungry. Like Tom Savini's hungry. Like, do you know what I mean? He's not that like he's out of ever feel like he's a. Uh, got lazy um, but um, do you know what I mean some of his stuff here is like whoa fucking and this hell, is early, early in his career and he he's having fun to show you that he can do something new yeah, every yeah, time yeah 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 you know some of these kills are very very inventive yeah this wouldn't have been that long I suppose <laughs> after he came out of the internet well I suppose it would have been oh, I don't know yeah so we cut to present day and the date Gav is Friday the 13th <gasps> That's the name of the movie. <laughs> uh, and we get to we see a girl hitchhiking to Crystal Lake. Yeah, she's walking along, quite a pretty girl. She's uh, sort of oh, I don't know how long she's been walking for, but it's like she's walked there from from the other side of America. And uh, she, yeah, it does seem like because they they like she goes into this bar and they're like oh, um, diner and they're like oh we can give you a lift so it's twenty miles there I can give you a lift halfway so you can let her walk ten miles yeah like, fuck yeah everyone in the diner is pretty weird and in fact when she says hey guys I'm like she's so she's such a counsellor for a children's camp she's like she's so hey, everybody, upbeat yes. I'm looking for Camp Crystal Lake and somebody says you mean Camp Blood. Ooh, so it's got a reputation, is it? Something was going on, Daniel. Ooh. Uh, anyway, like you said, she gets a lift from a nice, seemingly nice guy who's quite a bit mean to her to begin with. He says, I take it you've never heard any of the things that happened there. And then she sort of has a bit of a dig back. And then by the end of it, he's quite nice to her. She's quite nice to him. But like you said, he drops her off 10 miles from the fucking camp. So. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, come on, I'm got, I'm, at least I was happy. He wasn't a pedo. Um, he could have very easily been a pedo. Now, don't forget, just before she gets in his truck, we do get to meet Crazy Ralph. He's got a death curse. You're going to their camp blood, aren't you? It's a death curse. It's a death curse. Uh, and then he gets on his little bike and wheels off down the ground the road. I love it. about the cops gone looking for us. So basically, yeah, this is what happens in it. Phone, hello. This is the sheriff's department. Ralph's gone uh, AWOL again. He's out on his bike. Oh, I'd lock the bike up. He managed to get out of it. For fuck's sake, where's he gone? Don't know. What do you He's want me to do about it? You've got to find him. Whiskey. He needs his medication. And if he doesn't have it by two o'clock, he's probably going to do something bad. That could be anything. So yep. go get him. So for fuck's sakes, he's just driving around looking for Ralph. Going, he's going to death curse. 
<laughs> we cut to Kevin Bacon and his buddies driving along in a truck, and they seem to be listening to the Deliverance soundtrack. It, it, but, <laughs> yeah, the fucking comical, the B, 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 B version of it. Da, 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 da. Like the real comical version of it. Yeah, it's, it's like the... Just... Um, the Beverly Hillbillies, that kind of thing. <laughs> it's definitely not Deliverance. But they're listening to this as they drive along, and they're really excited to be going on this camp. And, you know, good for them. They're going to go and have a great time. Um, and they arrive at Camp Crystal Lake, and I, they see Steve. I, right, great, Steve. Here we go. I love, like, the fact that we've just had that movie a minute ago, and it had a character which I was like, that'd be like Mo from The Simpsons. This is like a, a, a sexy uh, Ned Flanders. <laughs> <laughs> he is a sexy... He really is. He's like Ned it's... Flanders if he's, like, had the body of Tom Selleck. In the early 80s with his little short shorts. He's got his little short shorts, with no a little, T-shirt. A little, but a, uh, uh, he's got his little, a little scarf. Napkin around his neck, just sort of... And it's just and like, I, whoa. And I love this. They don't even, he doesn't even say hello to them. He's chopping wood. Get, get on it. Come on, help me, help like, me out. Okay, you grab the paint. You grab the paint. And you chop this wood. I'll introduce myself to you all in a minute. But we've got to get these cabins ready for these kids. It's like his right. test or something. It's like, oh, my God. It's kind of like walking into Mr. Miyagi's garden and him going, paint the fence. And him, hang on, I'm here to learn karate. Paint the fence and wax the cars. Yeah. All right, Mr. Baggy, I'll do that. What's this? Uh, what's this move you're showing me now? Up and down, Daniel son. He's, he's I, so funny, so how oh, sexy Ned Frand is there, and sexy he, Ned. He, he's uh, then he's with like another woman, and it's, uh, at first you don't know what the dynamic is between these two. Yeah, um, it's like what is this? Is he just trying to honour with one of the camp counsellors? Who is this woman? And it turns out, actually, that they've got history. It's okay, but at first it's a bit like, uh, I don't know where yeah. this is going. Um, yeah, and is her? Is she Alice? Is that her name? Yeah, and she yeah, draw, she draws very well. He says. Yeah, she draws a picture of him when he was sleeping. So obviously they've been doing the sex. Ooh, we get our first POV shot in the woods, and they're talking about An- Annie. Is Annie turned up yet? Annie? No, no, uh, I haven't seen Annie I, yet. I actually feel there was a POV shot. <clears throat> I've got it down earlier on. Uh, where the religious songs with guitar, there was one then. Oh, yes, there was. But I meant in this present day now. Yeah, oh, okay. We are both correct then, dear. So. Yeah, you are, yeah. In the barn at the beginning, you're right, there was one. Um, mm. But that was the best thing with these films because you could do that, but it didn't actually have to uh, be. I remember watching, I'll get to what I'm saying then. I remember watching a movie one day and just sitting there going, oh, it's the POV of the kid, and all of a sudden someone comes into shot and the camera just follows them. You're like, oh, my God, they just fucked with that shit. <laughs> nice. That's good. Mm. So, That's very clever, actually. Yeah. Um, well, everyone's painting and setting up the camp and repairing roofs, and they start loading up the arrows and repairing the... Uh, targets for the arrows because there's some archery there and stuff so you know everyone's very very busy they're getting this camp ready for these kids so it's not just an easy job where you go there for the summer you've got to actually help get it ready and then you've got to look after a bunch of brats yeah for uh, for, for uh, 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 summer they um to be fair they are quite hard um, hard workers they are they're really hard working and they play hard too you know they like to sort of have a beer in the evening and do Work other hard, things we play hard and they also play Strip Monopoly, which we'll, we'll get to later on as well. Yeah. They do. I don't know how you'd play that, but yeah. Um, one of the kids is a bit silly. He fires an arrow. God damn. It this just is, misses one that of the girl. woman counsellors is just placing like, the, the uh, target in a correct manner and just literally moves away. And, <laughs> so and then he cases her in the woods. crazy? But, you know, it's all flirt. It's fine. I guess he didn't kill her uh, this the, time. The chef hasn't turned up, so they're like, "Right, you need to fucking sort some shit out." I'm sexing Ned Flanders, and I'm off the town. <laughs> yeah, and 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 it's Annie is the chef. So we cut back to her, and a jeep drives along, and uh, quite a nice little cool jeep. And she sort of says, "Hi, oh thank God, I didn't think I was going to get a lift. I'm going to Camp Crystal Lake." A POV. We don't see From who the it is that's driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. As they keep driving, she realises they're speeding up. Hey, 
Yeah, you came on a bit too fast, and it's like uh, it's like, hey, it wasn't that the turning back there? Sort yeah, of thing. they've like, gone past you know, the turning. Like, what the fuck? So it's like basically this is Kurt Russell in uh, Death Proof now. Now it's your time to uh, really panic or whatever he says. <laughs> Well, eventually she has to jump out of the jeep while it's moving. Yeah, it's, it's pretty just, good stunt actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, to be honest with this, is already like compared to the other film we looked at. Um, it's just a little bit more meat to it. I don't know what it is. A bit more pizzazz to it. Do you know what I mean? There's a little bit more like juice to it. You got a bit more oh, getting in there. Probably <laughs> I don't just. Know why. I just a load of words. I don't know probably what just a, a bigger budget. I should imagine. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just more flair to it, or whatever. You know. Yeah, more more stuff going on behind the scenes. But yeah, so she jumps out of the jeep, and she starts running off into the woods. You get a classic Clearly. Sting score Friday the 13th movies, which carry on because he Harry carries on like scoring the other films. There's a real, even from this film, it's like the the strings are real stabs. Dun, 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 and it's, it's got a real nice sound to it. And I think that's a bit of a motif which just carries on through the Friday the 13th movies, which each time you're like, oh, this is a Friday the 13th movie. Definitely influenced by Bernard Herrmann's Psycho oh, score. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but in a beautiful way. Yeah, not yeah. in a not in a, a reanimator way where they I, I still not re- I think reanimated one's done so beautifully though no, uh, to be honest it's very good yeah but it's very much it is a fucking rip off <laughs> but yeah it's a bit uh, cheap you... if you're the composer like yeah how do you sleep at night but it's like Vanilla Ice saying whoa 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 it, it, I didn't rip off Queen because there's one extra note in it but you still ripped off Queen you just added an extra note in there Vanilla yeah That's... That's the second Vanilla Ice uh, time he's come up. (laughs) Yeah, will we have a hat trick? (laughs) Oh, you never know. Um, So, yeah, she gets her throat slit. Yeah, it looks... To a beautiful score. My notes say it still looks decent in HD. So that's good to know, do you know what I mean? Because sometimes you get some effects come out, but I'm sure Savini would be like, no, like, in real life, when they make it going, this looks the fucking bomb. So I didn't watch this on VHS because... I wanted to see it in nice and clear, so I watched this in HD. No, I watched it on Blu-ray. Oh, no, I'm I'm saying I oh. didn't, because... Did you have, it, did you have it on VHS? I've, I've kept all of my... I've got all Friday the 13th movies on VHS. Oh, I, gave, I, I gave them away at one point. I don't know why. I've got all my Halloweens and all the Freddies as well on, on VHS. I don't know why. They're the, some of the few I'll hang on to. Yeah, I haven't really got that many slashes of those. Yeah. No. Next thing that happens is the kids are at the lake and someone's spying on them from the bushes. One of the girls even spots it but doesn't really say much. Yeah. And uh, my next note says, bacon in speedos. Of course it does. Because, of course it does. I could have probably guessed that that's what your next note said. But there's this bit where this the, the camera's at a girl's head. She sat down on the ground and then he walks up behind her so his groin is at her sort of head height and you just can see this gigantic bulge in his speedos and it's the it's like they knew that was there I've literally got no notes about bacon in his bulge well guys the bacon it's like david, bulge it's like david bowie in labyrinth that big old thing the bacon <sighs> bulge bacon bulge you guys know what i'm talking about uh so anyway ned plays a terrible drowning joke where he pretends to drown just so he can kiss the girl Again, you know, the eighties. It was all light-hearted, fun. It was, yeah, yeah like just like a tongue, <clears throat> tongue them. But what this um, does here, which I don't think Sleepaway Camp did, what this does here is it demonstrates that there is a chemistry between them all, and you do actually truly believe that they're all friends, they all flirt, they're all getting on quite well. Didn't get that in Sleepaway, and I think that's where one of the things areas got let down. Yeah. <clears throat> Suddenly, Alice is in her cabin. She spots a snake. She does. Now, I'm pretty sure that when Bill kills the snake... Yeah, no, no, it does, yeah. It's a real snake. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah it's not It's not great. It has been addressed before. Um, okay, I didn't know I don't know think that. they're proud of it, but yes, it is. Yeah. No, so, yeah, guys, just a trigger warning. You do see a snake get killed in this. Yeah, um, I'd like to think all of you have seen Friday the 13th. Yeah, I should hope so. If you haven't, enjoy. You know, but again, some of you might not like it. <laughs> if you haven't, enjoy. <laughs> I'm not trying to sound sexy. You always do. 
Sexy. So a cop shows up looking for Crazy Ralph, as you mentioned. Now, this cop is... This cop is, is great. This scene is actually so funny. I'd never realised how funny this scene is because the kids are all mucking around and this cop shows up who thinks he's like Clint Eastwood, John Wayne. Clint Eastwood in if Clint Eastwood was in Chips. Yeah. And he shows up like, I'm the sheriff around here. Especially if you've been smoking. Smoking, you know. <laughs> you know, Colombian gold, man. Weed, hash, you dig it. He's like, what? And they're like, no, we don't. We're not smoking anything. We're just here to paint the camp and, and look after the kids. About to give him shit, and then he's called away. Yeah, but they're all just laughing at him because then he speeds off on his motorbike, turns around, and has to come back the other way. And it's just so funny. It's just quite but, over the top, but it's good. And it's nicely. It's over the top type sheriff, but he's acted very well. So he played very perfectly straight by that guy. Well, he doesn't like these kids, does he? Because this is his town, and he's he's heard. Oh, that it's a classic be... sheriff, or, or classic cop, isn't it? He's heard they're going to re... What are you doing? Yeah, you young yeah, kids. They're, they're going to je... reopen this camp. He doesn't believe that they should reopen the camp. He's against I'm, it. And all. he's pretty jealous that they're doing that shit. He wants to be doing that stuff, you know. But he was looking for Ralph. Well, Ralph is there. He's in the larder. Yes, he's going around looking for bloody Ralph because he's had the phone call about going looking for Ralph. Yeah, and Ralph... Ralph's, it, Ralph's in their larder. Ralph's eating so... sausage rolls in the larder. So, he's eating the quiche from uh, what was that from you know the movie with um, oh, 10 to midnight or whatever uh, it's called what does he say to him he ate my quiche no he <laughs> says it's a bit jack it off uh, no <laughs> no he was, yeah no no he said um, is it what, a quiche why didn't you tell me like, it was a quiche What's I that? thought it was pie <laughs> it was the weirdest thing he thought it was a pie and he got a quiche what, who, do, who writes that in the scripts? Charles Charles Manson, everybody. Bronson. <laughs> God, you've got to be listening to the show for a long time to get some of these references. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, but Ned, Ra- Ralph comes out of the old food pantry saying he's a messenger of God. Yeah. That's, that's great. This is all we need. And so if you'd never seen this film before and didn't know anything about it, you might think that this killer is, is Ralph, Crazy Ralph. So they're giving a little Again, fish, as Gab would call it. Yeah, <laughs> they're giving us a little fish there. <laughs> little gold fish there, just in case. Or a red herring. Um, Ned is wandering around on his own, and he sees... Oh, did I just see someone in that cabin over there? I'll go in and have a look. Yeah. Thunderstorm hits. Generator they... goes out, so they've got to go for the old emergency one. Yeah, and Bacon and Marcy, they head inside and they start making out. And they undress, as you would do if you've got... If you and Kevin Bacon were in a cabin... Together. You and Kevin Bacon? Look, fucking... What is this obsession? I said to Alice, I think I might have a crush on Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Especially she... back in the day when he was like, what hot young she... dude. What did she, she say? Went, she looked and just raised her eyebrows, as in sort of, yeah, I can see that. She didn't say anything. <laughs> What was she thinking? She was thinking about me and a bacon bone sandwich. She was <laughs> thinking... <laughs> That's what she was thinking about. <laughs> bacon on the bone. <laughs> wow. Okay. This this is gone. This is gone sideways. Um. So yeah, they undress, and meanwhile the others are all in a cabin together, and they've got the guitar, but they're getting bored, and it's raining, and they say. Let's play Strip Monopoly. And they're like, all right, let's do it. Hey, don't forget we've got that grass. Yeah, let's get that grass out and get blazed. So they're smoking weed, playing Strip Monopoly. They're all such fucking fun. nerds. And Kevin Bacon is sort of... Well, my notes say, Bacon is making bacon. <laughs> he is giving this girl a good time. Her eyes are rolling back in her head. She's literally like... So, and then... <laughs> are you telling? So basically, you got to remember though, Mrs. Voorhees is already there. Yeah, she's watching bacon making bacon. <laughs> she's, she's she's viewing the bacon making. Yeah, she's like, wow, he's really going for it, that young lad, isn't he? She's um, there just like Jack. I bet she's having a little, uh, little role play, isn't she? What Marcy and Kevin Bacon don't realise though is that while they're banging away on the bottom bunk. Dead. Mrs. Voorhees is underneath having a wank. Dead, yeah, but Ned's dead body is on the top bunk, isn't it? <laughs> God, it's even worse. Ned's dead body. Well, Ned's Nathan's dead body is at the top. 
No, it's not. Oh, it, oh, you're not on about sexy Ned, Ned Flanders. No, no that's oh, the, actual Ned, right? Yeah, Ned is dead. No, that's yeah. Ned, baby. Yeah, Ned's Ned, dead. Sexy Ned Flanders is out of town still. So they finish making bacon, and Marcy says, "I'm just gonna go. <laughs> I'm just gonna go pee." Um, so Kevin Bacon's like, "All right, I'll just put my." My sexy green vest back on because it's getting a bit cool, and I'll wait for you to <laughs> and come I'll back. I'll smoke a joint. Mrs. Voorhees is like, "Fucking hell, finally!" And then there's some blood drips on his face, and he's thinking, "Oh, is that where's that coming from?" Then she didn't know that that's going to happen, so she's got some really good timing to shove that knife through that throat, knowing that he's just had those drips. Well, great kill here because Kevin Bacon, really good, famously had to stick his head through a prosthetic, prosthetic chest and neck underneath the bed and then they shove this little sp- spear spike thing through from like she's under the bed and yeah we get the um it's really it still looks really good but apparently the the shot that was used was the shot that almost went wrong in that the blood didn't really do what they wanted it to do so the guy under the bed probably tom savini i think um blew into the tube and that's why you get the arterial squirts that wasn't supposed to be happening it was just supposed to like pool out of his neck okay. but instead you get the little squirts coming out which is great and Kevin Bacon sells it he's a great actor it's just even back creepy. here it's probably creepier yeah oh squirts um, yeah and Bacon is skewered uh, put here <laughs> skewered Bacon um, he, I was still thinking about Alice and her bone bacon sandwich you were thinking of um, she, her, his lady friend is now washing her hands after yeah. going to the bathroom presumably washing her mouth out Whatever she's washing. Um, and uh, she gets, uh, which some say is a, a bit of a ripoff from uh, Bay of Blood, or the, at least the idea was taken from, oh, regardless of whatever it was, it was, it's done here and it's done very well. Um, it's an axe to the face. Wow. And I'd forgotten just how good this kill looks, actually. Yep. Yep. Really good. And we used a similar kill in when we made Shadow of Death on my character, didn't we? Spoiler alert. I with totally a machete think, I there. absolutely totally forgot about that, yes. But it's very similar kill. Um, yeah, axe to the face. She really sells it. It looks great. Savini, obviously a Vietnam War vet, he, he photographed corpses and injuries, real ones, which is why he knew how things really looked. So he got this just right. And it not that I've ever seen someone with an axe in their face, but I can guarantee it looks pretty much like this. It's awful, but great at the same time. Yeah. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Steve, <clears throat> Steve's headed back into town, hasn't he? Steve's in a diner, price. isn't he? And he's in a diner. He's he's in with this curly-haired lady who wants some sexy Ned Flanders penis. She is really into Steve. She fucking wants him. But he says to her, look, you know, what do I owe you? And she says, other than a night on the town? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's only $2. And he's like, oh, thanks. You're too good to me. And then he leaves and he's like, I'll head back now in the pouring rain. And it's awful rain, isn't it? And he's driving his little Jeep along in the rain. Yeah. And yeah, we cut to Brenda now in the shower. She's in the shower block. So there's another lady in the shower now. Now, Steve breaks down. And he bumps into the cop from earlier. And the cop says, look, I'll give you a lift. Leave your Jeep here. It'll be fine. Well, um, I'll give you a lift back to the camp and don't worry about it. Okay, cool. That's what's going on there then. So the cop and Steve's, or Sexy Ned, as Gav likes to call him, have teamed up. Sexy Ned Flanders. It's something in your mind, isn't it? It's um, there's an episode of The Simpsons um, when uh, Ned Flanders is uh, walking really fast with uh, hot pants on, <laughs> with his big bum out of back, and as he goes along, uh, Homer goes, "Damn it, Sexy Ned Flanders." <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, well. Brenda gets back into the bed and she hears, help me, from outside. So Mrs. Voorhees is using one of her voices. Oh, yeah, because Mrs. Voorhees has got out from underneath the bed. Help me. She's gone off. She's done her killing, gone out. Okay, I'm thinking of her movements here. I'm breaking it down. She's also killed the other girl in the shower block, Marcy. Oh, okay, yeah. So she's taking people out at quite a rapid rate here. Oh, well, the axe in the face, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, axe to the face. So um, she goes outside and the archery lights come on just as she gets to the target. But, but, picture that, though. Like, that, that, that woman uh, playing Mrs. Voorhees, like, just to her, just there doing that voice. 
doing a little girl's voice, just pretending yep. to be. Imagine if you were there and that's like that person. That'd be just so, it's so much creepier because they, they shouldn't, they look like they shouldn't be making this uh, visual appearance of this type. Do you know what I mean? It's just it so looks like the voice creepy. shouldn't be coming out of that. Yeah, Which is right. why I maintain to this day the one movie that still gives me chills and because of the age I was when I saw it was The Exorcist because when that voice comes out of that little girl I lose my shit every time. Yeah. It just does something to me on a, an animal level and not in a sexy way. On a, I didn't think it'd be in a sexy a way. <laughs> no one thinks it's in a sexy way. Yeah, you got to be careful. Unless sometimes... weird people think it, eh? That's all. Look. Get on with it. Look. Sexy Ned Flanders. Um, so Alice does some searching. She finds an axe in a bed, which is, ooh, what's that doing here? A bit strange. And this she, is she where doesn't, She doesn't put a coat on, though, when she goes out into the pouring rain. It's like, why haven't you put a coat on? You had a coat on earlier. Yeah, why didn't she put a coat on? Fuck uh, knows. And she's been playing Strip Monopoly. It's really weird. Mm. Um, yeah, we do have the floodlights go on, and we're on the archery lawn and stuff like that. Yeah, and then Steve shows up, but he's killed immediately by who, someone that we don't see, a POV. So someone who we thought was our hero, who we thought was safe, is dead mm. now. Sexy Steve is gone. He's sexy now as well. Sexy Bacon's gone. Sexy Steve's gone. What? You know, who's left? Even Ned's dead. Yeah. We've just got the girls left now. Luckily, they're quite sexy too. We've got Ned Flanders still. Bill, Bill's still alive. No, Steve's dead. Steve gets killed. Oh, as soon as he turns up to camp. Yeah, as soon as he arrives oh, at camp. He jumped ahead he's like, oh, what are you doing out here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and yeah. then whoever it is that is doing that, I know. It's gutted, man. He gets, he does get back as well. So Bill, one of the last men that's alive, says, "Look, I'm going to go out and sort this generator out." And Alice says, "Well, I'll make some cocoa while you're doing that." Great. Okay. Maybe put some whiskey in there for me. Oh, she is so boring. This last girl. And she finds a dead Bill with an arrow in his face. Kill Bill. Kill Bill. Bill's killed with an arrow in his face. So Ned's dead. Bacon was making bacon. And she's the final girl. And Kill has been billed. I, I wish... I don't... I, I want it to be a different final girl. So she does this cool thing now where she realises, <clears throat> oh shit, someone out there is trying to kill me. I better barricade the door. So she, not only does she barricade it, yeah. she, t she ties a rope around the handle, chucks it over the beam of the ceiling, around the bed, and she pretty much guarantees that no one is getting into that cabin. It's very, very clever. She then barricades the doors and the windows. Unfortunately, <laughs> Mrs. Voorhees is very strong. She's like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> the way he would throw somebody around in WrestleMania... Mrs. Voorhees picks up and throws a body of one of the teenagers. I reckon when she goes to pick him up, to pick up the body, she's got a Hulk Hogan like song in her head. And I did not hear it. No. <laughs> Come on, brother. <laughs> That's right, brother. Um, yeah, well, she's strong, like you said. But um, the body goes through the window. Luckily, the Jeep pulls up. Oh, she thinks, Steve's here. Yeah, unfortunately not. Unfortunately, it's we an get absolute lunatic of a woman who is the last person you want to turn up. Definitely top three cinematic jumpers slash sweaters of all time. She uh, also Mrs. Voorhees would be if this Friday Thirteenth was a standalone movie, she would be up there with like the the gnarliest like killers of all time. Do you know what I mean? Like In Norman the movie Rose and Baby, all those sort of films, like just a real like yeah, like, like yeah, or um, yeah, Misery. Kathy Bates's character, things like that. But but Mrs. Voorhees, Gav, her jumper, her sweater that she's wearing. <laughs> yeah, we'll give her props to the sweater. So top three cinematic movie sweaters of all time. We've got she... our favourites, Fright Night, obviously. Fright Night. Michael Douglas in uh, Basic Instinct. Yeah. And Mrs. Voorhees. That's my top three. Yeah. I'm Mrs. Voorhees, she says. Ah, I'm, a friend, I'm an old friend of the, the families, of Steve's families. That's there's some terrible weather, and I thought I'd come in to see if you guys needed any help. Okay, that, that's great. Well, a lot of people are dying, Mrs. Voorhees. She then admits, did you not hear about the young boy that drowned here? Yes, he was a young boy called Jason. He was a 
special boy. And today is his birthday. And they, they were off having sex while he drank. I know, it's very it's got a kind of a Hitchcock hitch to yeah, you know. Well, I always think that this could have been Imagine if Alfred Hitch I often fantasize and I Hitchcock directed something Hitchcock, like this. Yeah, or even this. Because it's got some elements in it that are very Hitchcock. If he'd been a bit younger, and um, I reckon he might have done, like, the fact that what he did with Psycho, like, made it with a cheaper sort of crew, a TV crew. So like, I can do this a bit cheaper, they can work longer, they know how to work, we can get on with it, boom, dun, 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 and do it independently. What if he did this, they said, oh, well, we can employ you to come on and direct it. That'd be fucking amazing, wouldn't it? Imagine. Imagine that. So what I love about this scene is... You've got two actresses, uh, what, we female do actresses. Hitchcock episode. Yeah, we've only covered as Psycho. As so a we director. Pick... Yeah, we can pick a couple. I've got a box set. I need to watch this movie. It's a good excuse. So what I love about this scene is you've got two actors. You've got Betsy Palmer and you've got Adrian King, who plays Alice. And slowly, Alice witnesses Mrs. Voorhees unravelling, her, insan- her sanity unravelling. as she and... starts. She starts off telling this story about this young boy that drowned, but then she ends up saying... And it was because of you. That's what I'm saying. It slowly starts to go. It's like all the classics. And Alice man. is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean, me? The audience, then, though. The audience are realising this as she is as well, you know. But then she says, get her, mummy. Get her. And, and then, then, like, then it's, so, like, it's all, all bets off. It's like there's red flags everywhere. Like, this Alice is, is like, not I'm good. out of here. Yeah, absolutely. Fuck this shit. She pulls out a knife on Alice. Uh, but Alice manages to hit her with a poker. I would be like, are you shitting me? When she starts doing like, you know, mommy, are you actually shitting me right now? What are you yeah. doing, woman? Fucking don't do that shit. It's not funny. Alice runs off and we get the usual bodies sort of falling out of trees and stuff like that, including Steve's body just appears. Um, and Mrs. Voorhees starts speaking more and more in this child's voice. Uh, she hunts Alice down. Alice hides in a cupboard. And there's that really great um, moment where she's hiding in a cupboard and you see Mrs. Voorhees' his shadow outside right, the cupboard go backwards and forwards a couple of times. Yeah. And you think, oh, she's missed her and Alice seems like, oh, thank God. And then suddenly she appears, I can't remember what she says, but she looks through there and says, I found you or something like that. It's really scary, but comedy hit with a frying pan here. Boom. Just like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. Hold up, you're going very fast. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I do love this whole build-up of this like, this cat and mouse scenes going on. It's really well done. I think it, I think she plays it really well as in like this someone that didn't really believe in this movie when she got given the script. Pats, well, Patsy does. In, an, in another film, Patsy, under, Betsy, <laughs> Patsy Palmer. That, that's Patsy. Bianca from EastEnders. Yeah. That's Patsy Palmer. Yeah. Um, under another director. This scene, where they're sort of hunt, she's hunting her, mm. would have dragged. It would have dragged way too long. But under this director, it's just the right length of time. Because yeah. any any movie where the they, they, the hunter catches the prey, they have a bit of a scrap. Then the prey runs off, hides again. Then they catch them again. This happens three or four times. But this actually it really works in this one. Um, just uh, before it, it, it totally does it's, it's so good and you've got like this sort of psycho string score going on as well very very, very uh, same as that um, you've got a bit Mrs. Um, old um, Mrs. Voorhees does get a, uh, a, a knock to the groin oh I, didn't, I don't think I noticed that a real knock to the groin then knocks it out um, then, and then she starts doing the killer mummy she can't hide kill her and um, that's when she hides in the pantry and the door handle moves. And that's when you're saying about the going back and forth. Then the flying opens the door from the flying pan, boom, straight out. It's really well put together. It's just real yeah. quiet. Like, da, 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 like, oh, my God. It had been really great to watch the first time ever in the cinemas. You can tell that was really well choreographed and storyboarded. Mm. Um, yeah, well, it really was, yeah. They end up at the lake, beat, like on the shore of the, the lake, fighting... Um, How did really they get, get there? Because she just runs off and uh, she, Mrs. Palmer she just, comes out, doesn't she? She just appears, really. Like she, she does, yeah, yeah. But that's fine. That's what these movies are about. That the killer always just but, catches but, up with you. But as the killer was so good, which we didn't really expect to happen. But then, what happens to uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Voorhees then? Well, she gets beheaded by a machete. Her head gets lopped off. 
And it must have been a hell of a swing to lop her head off with that machete, but she does it. Yeah. It's a great beheading, actually. The head sort of flies up in the air. I wonder, slow if, they, if, I wonder if they read it, wrote it differently, where so she gets away. And you don't know if she's going to be out there again. It obviously wouldn't work, but I'm just, you know, just thinking something like that. Well, they certainly never expected to make more Friday the 13th. Yeah, and I think probably going with things like this, just to keep doing shock turns here and there as much as we can. Like Hitchcock with Psycho, that's killing off the lead, you know, that thing. Yeah, because the next. Um, Friday movie kills off the main girl yeah, in the opening so, scene. So I think they're probably trying to go with that whole thing and you know, scream well, obviously comes from these as well. After witnessing all of her fellow counsellors <clears throat> dead and beheading an old lady who's trying to kill her, Alice decides she needs a bit of a breather. So she gets into a boat and floats out to the middle of the lake till morning. Does indeed. Now... Gav's happy at this point, listeners, because the cops have shown up. Oh, look, the police. Nice, nice music. She looks up, she wakes up in this lovely serene lake. Oh, look, the police. The comes up the water. I'm going to touch the water because it looks nice. And all of a sudden, <laughs> Jason, the deformed little boy, flies out. And apparently when that happened, the first time people saw this in theatres, People lost their shit. It's and I really, can imagine. It's really great because you think the head lopping off is like bad enough because it's quite a gory film. So this must have been like, oh my god! It definitely got made. People go, you gotta go watch this film. Yeah, but that's not the end because no. Alice wakes up in hospital, yeah. and they're like, "Wow, are you okay? We, you know, we found bodies everywhere. What's going on? What's we've got some questions for you. We're glad you're okay." And uh, she says, "Are they all dead?" And they're like, yeah, everyone's pretty much dead, I'm afraid. I'm really sorry about this. What about Jason? What about the little boy in the lake? We didn't find any boy. Little boy? And then she says, then he's still there. Then that's the end. Yep. Setting them up for sequels if it made a few bucks. It did make a few bucks. It, It made quite a good amount of money. Probably made more than Halloween originally made, because um, that established horror movies. But people didn't people didn't go and see it. But by the 1980, people were going to paying in droves to go and watch horror movies. And word of mouth, people would have, like you said, people would have gone, oh, go check out this movie. The end of it is crazy. Yeah. Um, and it's just very polished and well made, and it, an incredible film. Probably the definitely technically the best of the franchise, but not my favourite. But I I can enjoy every single episode of, of this franchise. Oh well, I, I, yes, you, you can watch this movie quite easily with the other films, even though Jason is not the killer. Um, um, it still plays very well because it sets up rules and boundaries and the POV and and stuff which can be replicated but we then just cut two shots of seeing someone in a a mask and obviously we don't have the mask till later on so the movie films are different like the Halloweens but the Halloweens obviously really went different with the part three and then tipping it completely off balance and then trying to get back on track and they've always tried to get back on track they're trying to get back on track now sort of thing so, um, but these always had the same thing going along, apart from the one of them, which was awful. As it uh, goes to hell, I watched it fairly recently. It was terrible. It was part nine, I think. The one with um, nine. Jason's part nine. Par- uh, possessing people. It's really bad. Really, really yeah. bad. Oh, I've got some time for that one, though. <laughs> mm. um, apart from that, um, you know, and obviously he goes to space, of course he does. Yeah, but that's. Everybody that's went to space. Hellraiser, Leprechaun, everybody goes to space at some point. Um, I don't know if Jason. Apart, uh, from, uh, apart from old uh, thing, me jiggy, old uh, knife for knife machete. Oh yeah, he never went to space. He's not going to be going to space. I don't think they'd be. Making that second film was awful. They, they won't make a third one. I told my story about the man doing ketamine next to me in the cinema. But I, I went to watch the machete. I sequel. think you have, yeah. Yeah. Weird. Why do you sit there, <laughs> and sit there doing ketamine watching that movie as well? So I just don't know. I just don't know. Um, look, this film, Film Gods, for it's sure, man. Really, really good movie. Um, um, you know, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. If you have seen it, go watch it. You, hopefully, us talking passionately about it has rem- reminded you just how great it is. 
I try and watch a few of the move, the Friday movies every year. Hey, same, man. So I, lo- I love them. That's why I've got them on Blu-ray. And I can't get rid of my DVD collection now because it's play signed by Uji Maduji. Um, so Kane Hodder. Kane Hodder. Sorry, thank you. Sorry, Kane. Um, but I do have to get them on Blu-ray straight away. So, so yeah, I don't really care what price that is. Yes. And it's, one to, it's always one to eight. The box is always one to eight. And I'm happy with that. Yeah, they never chuck nine in there. And that's fine. And there's X, then there's the remake, so... Yeah, the remake is the 12th one, I think. I Um, do hear there's a film being talked about again. And they might actually, nowadays, with everything going a bit more serious, a bit better, like like that Texas Chainsaw Massacre went on to Netflix, wasn't that bad, I didn't mind it. They might do something like that. You can imagine... Well, the next one will be the 13th one. So it makes they've got to do something well. for that. They could call it the 13th Friday. It'd be F13, like wouldn't it, probably? It'd be sick. They could do something really cool with it. it yeah, you could probably do a good movie. but I um, Unfortunately, I rewatched the remake, I think, last Halloween. And I thought I liked you want, it. No, because you want to like it. You want to go every time. I've done it before. I've tricked myself. Oh, no, I think no, I, I want to like it. I want to like it. And I start watching it and go, I hate this. I hate it. The kids it. are all full of it. You know, it's, just, it's brutal, but, but it yeah, was, but it's, there's no, there's no soul to it. It's just doing what the people want, or they want the kills and stuff like we do. But come on, the great thing about this franchise is when we go work our way through them, we've got the Crispin Glover dance. We've got some great characters, really good kills. You know, because it's every every um, every ser- uh, every film in the series is a different group of counselors. So you're always going to have different kills, different people. But you got you know, Corey. Oh, oh, of course, we've got Corey coming up. Wow. For a couple Lots of films. To talk about. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be fun. So, yeah, next summer we'll be doing um, Friday the 13th Part 2 and Part 3. 3D! Mm. I love the 3D one. It's just ridiculous. That being our 10th year of podcasting. Wow. Yeah, because this Christmas hits, we hit our ninth year. My God. Oh, it's nine years. Okay. Fine. Yeah. So this Christmas, nine nine okay, years. So it won't be ten. Okay. Wow. That's a long time we've been podcasting, isn't it? It's a while. Um. Okay. Cool. Well, thumbs up from both of us on that one, guys. Um. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us while we reviewed these summer camp ho- tent horror movies. Um, Very intense movies. I like Sleep Away. Gav doesn't. We both love Friday the Thirteenth. We do. Let's go out of here and let's come back in and just wrap do things the outro. up. Yeah. The big blow. Goodbye. Well, for now, we'll be back. Mm. And we are back again, ladies and gentlemen. Guys, ghouls, non-gendered, spooky peoples, and all sorts of peoples. We're back to say goodbye. Bye. That sounds like the. Uh, it sounds like that should be the tagline for a film. They're back to say goodbye. I like that, but that would be like a, a, a something like a Bill and Ted coming back again for another movie. Yeah. Um, that'd be like that yeah, that third film was not, not saying that it. Wasn't that great? I, I doubt if I will. Well, that was episode 124, Gavin. Yeah. We got we got camp in the woods. It all got very intense, and. I'm, my sleeping bag. There's something in my sleeping bag. I don't know what it is. Oh, your what was knocking against my my tent all night? I think it was a trouser snake. Because the, the, the cloth came out. Oh, I what don't know. What was that? I was trying to swat a fly for about ten minutes in my tent. It's outside though. I think it's big fat on a wank. Yeah, that was me. A bit weird, wasn't it? So I hear what you're asking. What is coming up next? I feel like you're in the woods and you see Bigfoot and you're like, fucking hell, look, it's Bigfoot. Get get my camera. Oh, I've dropped my camera. Oh, it's seen me. It's, it's coming towards me. Oh, oh my God, it wants to kill me. It's going to kill me. It's going to eat. It wants to eat me. It doesn't want to eat me. What? Oh, my God. Yeah, because it would be like it'd be like that scene in Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula, where the werewolf, as, as they run away, the werewolf's just in the bushes, yeah. staring off camera. Yeah. But imagine if you walk in, uh, you you see Bigfoot and you realise he's wanking, but he just keeps his eyes locked into oh! yours. With that big hairy hard on. And he doesn't, he just, and then he maybe he smiles a little bit. Oh. 
You might, you might say, do you need a hand with that? No, but what if he then get, like goes for you? If you go, it's going to eat me. Oh, no, he's not. He's going to kill me. No, he's not. He's going to... Oh. He's going to make sweet Bigfoot love to me. Imagine that. Your, big, your Bigfoot's sex Bitch. toy. Anyway, episode 125. What is coming up next? That's, it... that's something to tell people, isn't it? Yes, it is. On special, on special podcast. Yeah. What's up next? Episode 125. We're back to another patron pick. Oh, cool. It's exciting. Yes. So, our friend, our fellow podcaster, our buddy, RJ McCready, is up next. And he has chosen 1974's A Land Time Forgot. I saw it and, maybe once when I was a kid. And 1978's Warlords of Atlantis, or sometimes um, known as Warlords of the Deep. No idea. Both, I believe, starring Doug McClure. And you said they are... Um... Ray Harryhausen. Yeah. So we're talking some good old-fashioned Saturday afternoon 70s plasticine claymation. Yeah. Let's get stuck into it. So that's what he's chosen. What's the beauty of these, doing these uh, patron pick films, is that the, the are films we wouldn't do, like... I never knew how much I could laugh over talking about a bowl of custard and a donkey. <laughs> I never knew that that was possible. I almost stopped breathing and died yeah. live on air. Thank you again to Matthew for picking Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> that was so, almost killed, Gav. So coming up with these films, <laughs> sometimes we see things others may not. Indeed. Well, that's episode 125. We'll be going over why RJ has picked those, what they mean to him, and we'll be reviewing them which is going to be exciting then. After that, episode 126. <sighs> Nicholas Curry. Oh, yes. Colour, colourful films. We're doing Mandy and Colour Out of Space with our our unofficial mascot of the show. No, not Bill Murray. Nicholas Cage. Maybe he could step in instead of Bill Murray. Maybe. I'll see if he's available, actually. Mm. Got, Bill's got his number on his phone. It's that sort of thing, if you knew someone and knew him, it's that sort of thing where he, he, we could probably get him on the show and it'd be really weird. But like, well, this is I, weird. In 2019, um, I went away with my family to a cottage in Wells, W-E-L-L-S, oh, Wells. Yeah, yeah. And we walked into Wells, and I told my dad, oh, this is where they filmed Hot Furs, da 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 And then I said, this pub, last Christmas... Nicholas Cage walked into this pub on New Year's Eve because he was nearby filming. He also has a house nearby there. He just walked into the same pub that they filmed the uh, the um, Hot Fuzz in. And they were like, oh, Nicholas Cage. He said, oh, I heard you were having a New Year's party. And he just joined their party for New Year. Imagine that. Lock in. Lock in in the pub. Nicholas Cage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Get drunk and just be like, just, just look over. But... Fucking Nicholas Cage. He'd have loads of cocaine in his pocket. Um, Mandy. He'd fucking party. Like, he would be like he was on Terry Wogan again. Oh, that time when he'd he did be the just bat flicking bit. money out all over the place. Great stuff. Coked out of his face. Mandy, Colour Out of Space. That's episode 126. Nicholas Cage. We'll get into some crazy Nicholas Cage stuff. We'll talk about his suddenly how he's back into horror, and that's his big thing now. Um, so that's him. And then episode 127. I can now reveal will be mm -hmm. a couple of anthologies. Oh, okay. We'll be doing Twilight Zone the movie from 1983. Sweet. I've got that on video. 1985's Cat's Eye, which got a bit of a big cult following, that one. Drew Barrymore's in it as a little girl. I, yeah, I don't think I've seen that one. Oh. Well, it's three tales. Might be four. Oh no, no, I have, I have, I have. Is it? Yeah, and the is cat is basically. Yeah, there's a killer in it. In the cat. There, the there's cat. a cat in yeah. every, the same cat in every story. It's really good, and it's directed by some fantastic horror directors from the mid '80s. We'll get into that when we get to it. But Twilight Zone the movie and Cat's Eye, guys. So very exciting stuff. That's the next three episodes lined up. Mm, cool. Gav, have you enjoyed this episode? Yeah, it's been good. Um, it's, it was nice to chat about um, those films and, and that sort of type of summer genre of the horror world. Um, uh, yes, and nice to talk about Sleepaway Camp and not, you know, come out of it as a negative way. But, well, you had, you had uh, some good uh, points to me and I, I took them on board, definitely. And I can... I, it's definitely got... It's definitely a weak film. 
Hmm. But it's one of those ones that people um, like. You but know. I enjoyed the episode, yes. Good, good, good. Some I'm glad. Weird conversations, as always. as always. As always, yeah, as always. Well, I'll do a little bit of admin and then we can wrap up and say our goodbyes to everybody. So, as always, proud member over here of legion podcast network you can find out more about them on legionpodcasts.com uh, uh, and you can email us here at the podcast on haunted hill at outlook.com to tell us what we're doing right what we're doing wrong what you want to hear or if you want to become a patron or you can't find out how to become a patron or if you are a patron or if you just want to tell me to fuck off any of those things i'll accept them you can also find out more about us on facebook either legion podcast has got their own facebook page or we've got our own facebook page it's obviously it's just called the podcast on haunted hill we've got a little family a little community on there which as we touched on earlier is coming up on nine years now hmm. nine years you and i've been the weird parents to this weird family <clears throat> indeed <laughs> two weird hairy daddies <laughs> that's a weird title for a movie two weird hairy daddies my two weird hairy daddies I'd watch it it'd be um, it's um, the daddies bit which Rob, makes it Robin a bit Robin Williams cool. and um, Tom Selleck would be in that in the 80s because they're both really hairy it's not Tom Selleck it's someone else I'll think about it think about it um, so yeah Facebook and wherever you're listening to us now is where you can find us otherwise you can find us on most podca- podcatchers including Spotify, YouTube, Podknife, Apple Podcast Addict Podbean it's Robert Williams and BA Mr. T wow now I'm there I want to see that my two big hairy daddies I imagine those two get on quite well I reckon it would be actually a pretty good film um, you can also tweet us Twitter at Haunted Podcast. Uh, our Instagram is the po- the podcast on Haunted Hill Insta. If you want to find out more about Deadbolt Films, we talked about Tape 3 earlier. If you want to find out more about our other shorts we've done in the past, our other features, our comics, our other podcasts, then just go to deadboltfilms.com. Visit YouTube and chuck in Deadbolt Film. You'll find out a couple of bits and bobs on there as well. Um, we're on Instagram. It's just Deadbolt Films. And again, tweet, uh, Twitter, just tweet at Deadbolt Films. And finally, Patron. We talked about this. If you would like to become a patron and help us, you know, with the general upkeep and administration of the show um, and show us that you care and you want to support us in that way, then all you need to do is go to Patreon and search for the podcast on Haunted Hill. If you can't find us, message me or Gav, probably me, um, and I'll direct you there. Um, you don't have to do it. We would never ask. But even if it's just a dollar or a pound a month you want to donate, every little helps. And you get a free T-shirt. You get... Uh, access to all of our old shows we're releasing one every freaky friday we're up to episode 44 now so i've done it for 44 weeks in a row we've been releasing them and you now get to pick your patron pick you get to pick two random films that are kind of horror sci-fi fantasy related we hope um and tell us why you want us to review them and we'll do that so every three episodes from now on is going to be a patron pick until we run out of people or patrons or will desert us, whatever comes first. Well, we're doing rotation, so it's not really, it's not going to stop. Um, um, and, and yeah, uh, thank you so much to the patrons very quickly. Thank you. Thank you always totally, to yeah. beautiful patrons. And I will now thank so you all for name. Uh, so thank you so much to Don Collier, Matthew Godley, Jamie Jenkins, Kevin S5, Sarah Kay, Rachel, R. James McCready and Lex Boo. We love you all so much. Thank you. We love all of you listeners so much, whether you are a patron or not. And we thank you for coming with us on this journey every episode for 124 episodes now, plus a few bonus ones. It's pretty crazy stuff, Gav. Um, mm-hmm. I'm enjoying the it, though. The weirdest of conversations. Imagine if they made some of the films out of some of our conversations. They could really put me in prison with some of the snippets. If they put them together in the right way, I'd be in jail. Absolutely. Um, or you might create something amazing to save the world. I might, might bring the mammoths back. You never know. Um, you do another podcast, so do I. Yeah, what the High Strangers podcast. We both we both delve into the weird and wonderful. Uh, the High Strangers podcast with my um, gorgeous uh, lady, Sarah, and we talk about oddities. And uh, this, this weekend, I'm recording a new episode. I'm hosting it. And I'm doing UFOs. So I've been watching lots of UFO movies and things. I watched Sphere the other day. Oh, that's quite good with that one. It was okay um, towards the end. It's like, at the end, what should we do? Let's all forget about it. Okay. That's the is that, end. Is that the one with Queen Latifah? Yeah. The ending yeah. that they just, like, forget it all. Like, well, that's a crap ending. 
Um, um, so I've been doing loads of UFO stuff. Uh, what's the podcast you do? And you do a lot of true crime as well, don't you? I do like loads of true crime, like some pretty killers. gnarly stuff, yeah, sometimes. Some of it's pretty fucking heavy going. Mm. Um, well, that is the High Strangers podcast. Um, I myself now do a new show with RJ McCready, who we've mentioned, or as you call your gorgeous Sarah, my gorgeous RJ. Um, <laughs> and we cover lots of urban legends. Uh, we've covered the Mothman. Uh, we've covered well. We're we're coming. We're covering a uh, a specific UFO incident called the Aryan School UFO, which is about a school in uh, South Africa, well in Zimbabwe, where a UFO landed and over 30 children witnessed it and spoke to an alien. And this was in the 90s. So, ooh, and that is called Blame It on the Aliens podcast. So, what we're looking at each episode is whether or not we can blame blame it. it on the aliens, whether it's the Bermuda Triangle, Tommy Wiseau, aliens themselves, or just Bigfoot wanking in the woods. If it's going to be an alien, we'll blame it. And that's the other show. So, if you want to hear more of me or more of Gav, you can do it. Yeah, delving out into our weird worlds. Weird and wonderful worlds. So, mm. Gavin, it's been a pleasure, but it's it's a good night from sexy Ned Flanders. Oh, you beat me to it. A good night from Mrs. Voorhees. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. See, see you, you later. <laughs> it's a good night from Angela and her penis. Angela and her cock. And it's a good night from a paedophile chef working at a kid's camp. And Crazy Ralph. And Crazy Ralph. It's got a death curse. Who's in the kitchen today? You got Crazy Ralph and the pedo. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, great. We look forward to some sausage and chips then. Oh, bangers and mash. Hey, yeah. Like, that could be their nickname zone, too. Bangers, bangers and, mash. and mash. Which one's bangers? <laughs> uh, I'd say I'm, the I'm thinking Ralph. Bangers. I think well, Ralph. I'd say, I'd say Ralph is mash because his, his brain is mash, isn't it? He's no, bit... but I think Ralph is more tall and skinny and he looks a bit like a banger. Yeah, that's true. The other one was all fat and blobby like mashed potato. Yeah. There we go, bangers and mash, guys. We'll leave you with that thought. <laughs> they so made a little folk care. band. Take care. S- stay safe. Look under your beds. Lock the windows. windows. Doors. Lock the windows. Oh. All the curtains tight. The other night, I don't know why. Never do this. I don't know why. Because my brain likes to sabotage myself. I'm really good at sabotaging myself. But I was just turned everything off because I'm short sighted. So took glasses off now. I went to sleep. And where the curtains was, I was like, this last night was. The curtains were, I was like, that could be a person's head looking through the curtains. Oh, Jesus. And I know it wasn't, but I had to get my phone and have a little look and turn the light on. And I turned it off and I went to move the curtains open to rub it and went play back down. And it looked again. And I was like, now nah, that looks like a human person standing there with it. And it's like, for fuck's sake, why am I now doing this on purpose to sabotage? I'm 45. What am I doing? And I kept going for a little while, but then I think my OCD calmed down and I went to sleep. My wife and I have, I don't know if I've mentioned this, have realised that there is something at the bottom of our stairs. What uh, the shit? What are you telling me now? What? Yeah, like, over the last year, we've realised that we've both separately sensed that there's a presence in our hallway. Like, not necessarily a bad presence, but a presence. And especially at night, when you go, when you turn off the bathroom light and you walk across the landing to go to our bedroom, I always feel I've always felt like there was a shadow or a shape and it turns out Alice has and she asked me to describe it and I said it's about the size of like a one man tent and that sort of shape like a big dome so it'd be, it wouldn't be a human but it feels like it's like a, a blob it's hard to explain but like the shape of a small tent she said oh my god that's exactly the same shape that I get the feeling it is as well what the so, shit? I don't know what it is, but I don't have aliens, a look down the man. stairs. Aliens. Blame it on the aliens. Fucking hell. Well, well, there you go, folks. There's a little creepy yeah, yeah. one. It's the only part of our house that feels a bit creepy. The rest of our house is very homely. I'm For some not, reason, the bottom I'm, of my stairs is I'm a bit weird. Like that. Now I'm looking around me. I'll leave you with that thought, Gav. Right. Oh, see you later, Thanks, everybody. everybody. Sleep well. See you there. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the podcast on Haunted Hill. We will be back again real soon.